Hey y'all, Justin with Kayak Catfish. Well, I just got on the water, getting ready to do some catfishing this afternoon. And I wanted to bring y'all with me on a type of video, type of trip here that I ain't never done before. And what we're doing today is an unedited catfish trip. This is raw and uncut. You're gonna see everything from the time I drop my lines to every fish caught to every snag, any other shenanigans, you're gonna see it all start to finish. So I've, I did just get out here and get my baits on the hook. So we're gonna go ahead and drop them down. And then I'll kind of give you the rundown of where we're at, what we're doing. If any of y'all got any ideas, things we ought to be doing different, now's the time to chime in before we get started. I don't want no Monday morning quarterbacks out of here if things don't go well today. But anyway, right here's the first bait. That, folks, is a piece of chicken with a crappie jig there hanging under. I'm doing two rods with tiny baits, these pieces of chicken on here. And then I'm gonna do two rods with our normal large baits, really for trophy size catfish. We're going light tackle on two and big heavy action on the other two. Why I want to do that is to hopefully get us a few more bites out here today. So here's the other rig with the chicken. Same exact setup. It's got a Carolina rig down to a, I believe this is a six aught size circle hook, and then the crappie jig under that. But with these unedited videos, I've had a lot of requests for these. I do this with my ultralight trips and uh, people seem to like them. They're the most popular type of video on my channel over the last year. And I've had a lot of requests for the catfish videos to be unedited. And, uh, you know, the challenge with that is a lot of you know that, that are catfishermen. Oftentimes you go long periods of time without bites and on an unedited video, it can make for a boring afternoon of watching and I want y'all to be entertained. So them small fish we come across that are oftentimes nipping at these large baits that they can't eat, they can hopefully eat those and on the lighter rods, they'll be fun to catch. So this bait here, big skipjack head with a stinger fly under it. Drop it down there. And then I'm gonna have all four of these baits suspended, four rods, and we're gonna get going down in this creek. And this is a deep creek, it's wide. We're gonna hopefully at some point run into some cats, run into some bait. I've got the live scope on, so I've got another rod with a jig. If we see some fish up in the water column, we may even try to throw at a few of those. Here's the last bait going down, that's a chunk. Now, this skipjack, folks, uh, bait. Another reason for doing the, the light tackle rods here is when I went out to try to catch us some bait yesterday, it wouldn't have hurt you to brought some bait with us today, but when I went out, I didn't do very good. I got one skipjack and some yellow bass. So that's another reason for us to supplement. This rod here, if you notice the rod tip on it, I got a four ounce egg sinker on that, only got a two ounce on that. I wasn't sure, I don't ever do any of this light tackle stuff. And when you're trolling, I'm gonna get our speed going here. When you're trolling the resistance of the bait as you, and the water as you move through, uh, move along through the water, it has a tendency to rise up. And so that's why I like eight ounces on my typical, my usual catfish rods. That way it keeps everything vertical under the kayak as I move along. But uh, I wasn't sure with these lighter action rods what size weight we would need. So we got a two and a four. We may switch that. Look right here. Look right here. First thing. There's one that's higher up in the water column. Let me see if I can adjust the... I can't find him. Oh, there he is. Yeah, man, he's just sitting right there. We see some fish like that today. We're gonna try to bust them with a with a jig. I'm on. I'm just gonna get it ready here. This is basically a heavier action bass rod. I got a little bucktail hair jig. I'm gonna have it ready. If we see some stuff, I done lost that fish while I was telling you what I was gonna do. Where'd he go? I think he done swam off. I can't find him. 
Jay Gummit. Well, there'll be more by gosh, but as we make our way along, I'm gonna be watching that thing like a like a government watches us and see if we can see if we can see something else to throw at. We'll leave this jig we'll leave it sitting like that that way we can pick it up in a hurry but uh yeah folks we're gonna make our way down this creek and out here 46 feet right now which we've i'm gonna have to adjust these baits already because it i think i it was a little bit that one's okay i thought it was a little deeper than that when i got started on the intro must have been because that one right there's on bottom but anyway, with 40 something feet out here, as we make our way back, it'll obviously get progressively shallower. And we'll fish our way back in this creek to probably about the 16, 17 foot mark since we're suspending baits. I like to, I like to suspend typically in water that's deeper than 20 feet. You get shallower than 20 feet. I just don't find suspending baits is the, the right technique. It's, it's better to either be dragging baits or fishing under balloons or anchor down and casting out to the shallow water. I just don't, suspending vertically under the kayak, I just don't do as good in the shallower water. I'll see while we're running up shallow, the wind's pushing us up on this point over here to the left. We need to move to the, to the right. That'll keep us from getting snagged. So again, this is a this is a live scope screen here. I've got this transducer over here on the side. We can spin this around and look as we move along today. At some points in time, we'll have to put our map card back up just so I don't run us up shallow like I almost did a, a second ago there. But hopefully we're going to get some action today, folks. That's kind of that's kind of the goal, um, you know, in these videos. Take you all on a real fishing trip, not an edited video, not a, a highlight reel. Which let's be honest, that's what most YouTube videos are, right? I go out on a normal catfishing trip. I fish for four, five, six hours, and edit that video down to 20, 30 minutes long. So. You, you don't see everything that happens that goes along on the trip. You only see the good parts, which is catching fish. And this type of video just kind of, is that a fish or is that me snagged? That's me snagged. Dadgummit, you done, I'm talking to you. You done got us snagged here. No, that's fish. By gosh, that's a fish here on our light tackle rod. Let me just, let me spot walk. I thought you just had a snag. You done got a fish on there. How'd you just do that? It's tough to tell. This is my this is my skipjack rod right here, folks. This is a medium heavy action bass rod. So it's tough to tell how big a fish is. <laughs> I mean everything's gonna feel big today when we hook up. But yeah, it's a fish. I thought we had snagged. I'm sitting here talking to you. Talking about how y'all gonna see it all. And by gosh, we done seen it all, all right. Didn't see a fish. I see him right there on the screen. You see him right there? I've spot locked a second here while we get this one up. This light tackle stuff, it's it's something that I want to do more. Just for the fun factor. Catching big fish. I mean, I love ultralight fishing. And so catching a big cat on a rod like this, super fun. But my fear in this has always been, well, what if the day I'm out here with light tackle rods is the day that I finally hook that triple digit, that 100 pound fish? I don't want to be battling a fish of a lifetime on a bass rod, you know what I mean? So that's been my fear of it. I think it was, I guess we're in January now, so it's 2024. I think it was 2020 maybe. I was doing some light tackle and I caught a huge fish on a light tackle rod and then i had my one of my back rods go down which was a normal catfish rig i ended up breaking off one big one and the other one that i landed was huge 
So I'm sure the one that had hit the light tackle rod was huge too, but I, you know, I broke off. All right, folks, your chicken baits is getting it done here on a blue cat for fish number one. He's even going to give us that bait back. How kind of him. That's nice of you, fish. Where'd y'all put my glove at? I ain't fished out of this kayak much lately. I don't know where nothing's at. Bear with me, folks. I got to look for that glove. I don't know where it's at. Hell far. You done lost my glove. There it is. There it is. Can't believe y'all didn't bring the glove with you. You ain't prepared. You didn't bring no bait with you today. You didn't bring no glove. It's a wonder you even brought yourselves out here. Come here, kitty. You're going to be fish number one. I got to watch that crappie jig down there. I don't want to wear it. If y'all's my friends, you just reach down here and grab this fish for me now. Come here, fish. You on up in here. Boy, we got fish number one pretty quick on this video. That was my fear with doing these unedited catfish videos is like, what happens? What happens if I go an hour or two without a bite? You know, that's going to be, I don't know if I can keep people watching if I go that long between bites. How do you want to see this fish? I, that's another thing I got to ask y'all. We'll set you up there for a minute. Here's your fish. Number one right there. Old blue cat. Get on out of here. You old chicken eating thing. That fish don't know that chicken's raw. He's liable to get salmonella from it. Personally, I like my chicken fried. That's just me. Or rotisserie. Rotisserie chicken's pretty good too. But yeah, I gotta figure out, since I ain't never done this type of uh, unedited catfish video before, I gotta figure out how you all want to to join me on this. I did a poll on the audience back in I think it's last year sometime on the unedited videos for the ultralight. And the overall consensus was I think dang near every vote was for the camera to be in the chest. So you see everything first first person. But with catfish, I don't know if that'll be the same because what fish has got me all tangled up here? Bear with me, folks. But I was trying to say, in them ultralight videos, I'm actively casting along the shoreline. So when you're looking from my chest out, you're seeing you're seeing constant casting. You're seeing stuff happening on the shoreline. All that with catfish. When we go through this creek here, it's kind of just wide open water. You know, I don't know if that's going to be as good a view as looking at my looking at my face and seeing the rods behind us potentially. I don't even know how, what's happened with this fish and what, how he's managed to tangle us up like he has. See, this is the kind of crap that'd get edited out <laughs> on a normal video. You wouldn't see me sitting here undoing tangles. There we go. Are we making progress? Now, there it is. That wasn't as bad as what it appeared. I thought that dang thing was snagged the way it went over, so we're going to drop that same piece of chicken back down. And then we're going to get off here. I'm on the tip of this point behind me. It's it's come out, and when I first got going, we were a little up higher on it than what I wanted to be. I want to be out toward the end and make our way through the old creek channel here. In fact, I'm going to just... I'm going to adjust these other baits here before we get going again, just in case I might be possibly about to get snagged. And then we'll get on the move, see if we can't find some more. But it's very encouraging to have the skunk out so quickly. That's a, that's a big fear. Obviously, if we'd got skunk today, you wouldn't be seeing this video. Hell, fact is, if we only get that one fish, you ain't seeing this video, so. If you're watching this, and clearly you are, then we got on something today. So let's get the camera here. We'll figure this whole mess out. Y'all let me know down in the comments where you want to sit at. You want to sit up front there, or you want to sit here in the chest? Don't matter to me. So I'm going 
I'm gonna get us going again here. I want to keep my speed today slow. You know, water temps, uh, it says 47. I don't know if that's accurate because my transducer ain't been in the water very long. So I don't know if that's accurate or not, but uh, regardless, I want to be going slow today, like 0.3-ish, 0.4. The slower speed too will help with these. What's going on here? Is that, are we snagging? Or is that a fish after us? I think as a fish after us, because we ain't, we ain't snag. But the slower speeds will help keep these lighter tackle rods from the baits coming up in the water column too far. So that's going to be the plan. We're going to make our way back through here. It's, I started the camera a little after one o'clock. And you know, this time of year, it gets dark early. It's dark 530-ish, I guess. So we got, I'll probably run this camera three, four hours and, and see what we get during that time. As the sun starts to go down this afternoon, it's going to get cold and it's cold out here right now. I, I got my jacket, my coat here behind me in case I, I need it. But I think with it being sunny, if this wind will stay like it is, I think it's going to be tolerable. It's cold enough to make my nose run, so y'all may hear me sniffling some. That time of year, we'll have to we'll have to do it. I'm gonna get me a swig of water too from time to time. I get I get myself parched talking y'all. Get the old cotton mouth, you know. <clears throat> I'm gonna take this transducer here. If if we get to a point here, and it should be coming up soon last year it was january february around this time period that i got on a, a live scope bite where i was seeing catfish up in the water column and i was able to target them with jigs now that that point in time last year the creeks on the lower ends of the reservoirs of the tennessee river was just stacked with shad i mean i'm talking these massive schools like you get on a school and, and the whole graph from like 10 feet down to 30 plus feet down would just be blacked out because of the amount of shad. And it would be an area the size of a football field. And I was finding fish that were either on top of those schools, beside those schools, sometimes under them. But if I could see them on the screen and get that jig in front of them, I was able to, to catch them. Look right here. Look right here. We may have another one after the light tackle rod. Yep, we got him. Now this in here is what I was kind of bringing these rods with me for. A fish this size will sit down there and nip at our bigger baits, but we'll never have a chance at hooking them. And that actually ain't a catfish. Look at here, we got us some bait. We got us a, a yellow bass here. I'm gonna put you right down here in our pedal drive slot, Mr. Yellow Bass, head down. You sit right there and be good. You're going to be a live bait at some point today. Yeah, he ate that little crappie jig I had on below my, below my chicken. Nice. But yeah, these, these light tackle rods, you know, we get these catfish all the time that are too small to eat my bigger baits that are on the back rods, but they'll sit there and nip at them and peck at them and stuff, right? And I thought, you throw a couple of these light tackle rods out, smaller hooks and smaller baits, those, those bait stealers, as I call them, can actually eat those hooks and baits. So it'll give us some extra action here on the video. And, and uh, we catch a, even at the first fish, I mean, he was only a few pounds, but Heck, he was a dang good time on that rod. So we'll have some fun with it today. We just we just out here playing, y'all. We're going fishing today. But I hope we get on at some point this winter. It's going to happen where these schools, assuming it stays getting colder and colder, which I'm sure it will. 
at some point them schools of shad are going to stack up and when they do i think i'm going to be able to get back on a, a live scope bite but i wanted to bring that rod with me today just in case i found them my my channel members they are aware of a project i'm currently working on i've i've showed them what i'm doing on some members only videos but i'll kind of give you all the rundown while we're out here waiting on next fish so i wanted to have a a, a kayak that's basically set up just for the live scope um doing this in this kayak with the live scope last year it had its challenges you know obviously i'm using the motor here which i have a remote that i steer with my right hand my left hand over here is operating the transducer pole so i'm motoring along i'm i'm looking for fish i see one i got to get myself lined up on that fish put everything down pick up a rod make a cast and you know the challenge in that is you know first off you got to make an accurate cast to put that bait right on a fish's nose which that's a challenge in itself but you also you gotta you gotta hope that fish is being relatively still if he's actively swimming if he's on the move by the time you put everything down pick up your rod he's gone and so one of the things i wanted well here's what i'm trying here's what i'm what i've got going on at home so i've bought a smaller kayak it's a 10 foot model 10 and a half foot and i've got a transom mount Minn Kota, just a cheap uh, Minn Kota trolling motor i picked it up on marketplace i got I, I paid 500 for the kayak and 50 bucks for the motor i'm 550 dollars into this project but i'm taking that transom mount motor i'm mounting it on the front of that 10 and a half foot kayak and I'm going to put the live scope transducer on the motor so I can steer the motor and the transducer at the same time. And when I see a fish and I come up on it, if I need to slow down or stop, well, those transom mount motors, you can just turn the handle and they go in reverse. So if I put a live scope transducer on that motor, that motor don't have reverse. In order to go backwards or slow down, you got to turn the head of the motor back towards you and come this way. And if you do that with the live scope transducer on it, you're taking your eyes off the fish. So I wanted to try out that concept, but I couldn't do it on this kayak or my other pedal kayak because the kayaks are too long. Even if I put an extension handle on one of them transom mount motors, I can't reach it when it's all the way up there at the front. So I needed a shorter kayak that I could put an extension handle on and be able to sit there and, and guide it. Now, will it work? I don't know. It may be the dumbest idea ever. I'm currently waiting on a piece yeah, and it may be in the mail today actually when i get home but i need those those transom mount motors they've got them uh thumb screws i guess they're called that you twist and turn and it tightens the clamp mount onto a transom well on the end of those thumb screws there are some i think they're called clamp washers i think's the official word for them uh this motor i bought on on marketplace there it didn't have those so i've ordered them on uh, ebay which they were cheap they're like nine dollars and something for a set it wasn't bad but i've been waiting we've had the holidays and you know you know how it is so there was a delay on them shipping it out and then we had new year's and so it's been setting and but i'm hoping it's going to be there today and then i can finally hopefully get this kayak on the water and try it out and see how it goes whether or not it works out remains to be seen but that's the that's the winter project that i got going on and like i said my channel members i made some videos for them when i got that kayak and then uh, when i got to motor just kind of showing them the setup and, and what i'm doing so if it works out those of you that watching this video will see that kayak coming up if it don't work out well we'll just pretend it never happened <laughs> It'll be one of them things that's just, just forgotten about. This wind's going to move us a little quicker than what I'd like. I'm just kind of sitting here turning this transducer a little bit, just taking a look, not really seeing a lot right now, bait or fish. If we get to that point in the winter and I'm able to 
if I'm able to do a live scope video where I'm targeting catfish with artificials, what I'll do is bring another camera out and put it on the live scope and merge the footage together. That way you can see me casting and the live scope at the same time. That's what I did last year and it, it seemed to work pretty well. It's kind of a nuisance having a camera right there blocking part of your view, but for video purposes, it, it seemed to work pretty well. But it was a lot of fun last year. I, I, I didn't catch anything huge on the artificial baits in the live scope. But you catch small fish on the lighter tackle, it's, it's a good time. And being able to hit them catfish on the nose and watch them eat that bait, that was, that was pretty fun. But I, I had hoped that I would be able to continue that bite all year long and i knew if i was i would eventually come across some bigger fish and be able to you know stick a trophy size fish doing that but it just didn't it just didn't work out it, it was once once the water warmed up a little bit as we got into spring and those giant schools of shad kind of dispersed and broke up into smaller schools and spread out the the number of cats i was seeing up in the water column just it just disappeared I, I just wasn't seeing them anymore and that's one thing about uh doing a live scope technique with these artificials i mean you got to be able to see the fish on there to know where to drop your bait and catfish obviously spend a lot of time either on or near bottom and you need a you need some separation there between the fish and the bottom to see them good on the screen so once we got into spring it just kind of the bite just kind of fizzled on me and i got away from it but time keeps marching on whether we like it or not just keeps moving forward so here we are winter time again i'm hoping it won't be much longer than big schools start stacking back up i hope that other kayak works out though if it does it's gonna be money well spent if it don't, I think I've got everything at a good enough price that I can get my money back out on it in the spring. That kayak is an Old Town Sportsman 106, and it's like $1,150 new. And the kayak was only a few months old, and it had been barely used, so I paid $500 for it. So surely I can get that money back. I know, I mean, I see trolling motors all the time on Marketplace for $50, $60, so I should be able to get rid of the motor pretty cheap. But I do hope it works out. And fellas in the boats that are, I follow some of them trophy bass fishermen guys that are live scoping them. And those guys have the live scope transducer on their trolling motors, but they're operating it with their foot. That way their hands are free while they're spinning the motor around and, and the transducer looking for fish. And because they're in, you know, all those guys doing that, they're in big fiberglass boats, heavy boats. They don't get blown around in the wind as much as what happens to me in the kay these kayaks. Now this one's obviously a, a heavy kayak, but it's still very light compared to a fiberglass bass boat. So the wind, a light breeze will get you moving way too quick. And so it's harder to, it's harder for me to control everything as far as speed goes. So I'm hoping this other setup is gonna, gonna alleviate some of those issues. I gotta back us up here a little bit. This creek, the old channel here, you can see it kind of it kind of loops around this point and then goes this way. It's almost like an S shape. So we need to kind of go back this way and then down. But I want to follow that old that old creek channel. 45 feet here where we're at. Like I said, we're gonna work back to I don't know, somewhere between 15, 17 feet deep, probably. Oh, oh, look right here. That's on our head. That's on our big skipjack head. Something's got it, man. Something's got it. 
I didn't see him on the screen eat it. Did you? This is a good fish. Y'all get your sunglasses on. You're looking right in the sun. I need mine. That's a big bait, man. Y'all saw that skipjack head, man. That's a big bait. See, a fish like this, you got to assume we'd have seen it coming. Maybe y'all saw it and I didn't. But sometimes I feel like when you're suspending baits and you're moving along, fish, you can't see them moving on the bottom because there's no separation and all of a sudden they just come up and get it. That's yeah, a nice blue, nice blue cat right there. I don't know if you can see it because we're looking into the sun, but that's a good fish. Nice, y'all. Well, how far into this video are we? 30 minutes in, we already got two videos, or two, two videos, two fish, I should say. <laughs> There's gonna be a lot of fumbling words, that's for sure. Can't, can't edit that stuff out when I'm doing this type of video because we ain't editing nothing. So if I goof up my words and make myself sound dumb, well, it just is what it is. Come here, blue kitty. You actually front camera worthy. I gave that first fish some front camera time just to, just because you've actually earned it. Come here now. Come here now. Okay. Come on in, good buddy. Don't be hitting my, don't be hitting my jig rod over here now. Hey, look right here. That's another one of them split whiskered ones. I caught one. I can't remember if it was one or two videos ago I caught I caught one that had a split whisker but I didn't notice it until I was editing the video. Well look at that. Did you see that? I don't think he had the hook folks. He just had the bait wedged in his mouth. And thankfully we got it back because that's the only skipjack head we got. Let me set you up here in the in the front seat. Y'all set up here a minute. There you go. We gotta figure out if y'all want to ride up there permanent or. Oh, ooh, this rod's going down. This rod's going down. <laughs> Why have I got a fish in my hand and another one in the pole, y'all? Pick up a rod, dog onions. We supposed to be fishing together. Let's hit the spot lock. We'll reel that in in a minute. Let's hold this one up. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Raw and uncut catfishing. We we going strong here, y'all. I gotta let you go, fish. We gotta get you out of here. We got another one to reel in. Go on, go on down there. He gone. That fish got shortchanged. He's gotten gypped, folks. Let me do this. Since y'all ain't gonna come through the screen and help me at all, I gotta do everything fishing with you. Come up here. Let's get you back in the chest. Let's do this first. We still got that fish on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna lower this bait back down. Let me fix that head bait back on there. Well, I'm glad we got that back. That is the only one. I'm telling you, bait fishing was tough. Yersty. We're gonna put this live yellow bass down at some point. Whenever we lose the chunk on that other rod, or another hour or so, whichever. Y'all holler at me, remind me. But we'll put that live bait on. Okay. Now yeah, let's pick up on this one. <laughs> Doubled up, y'all. I don't know. I don't know if this one's gonna be as big as his friend over there I think this is going to be little brother right here probably need to loosen the drag on the I keep the drag pretty tight when I'm skipjack fishing because I need to be able to horse them in but if we get a big fish that takes this rod down it's liable to break our line come up here blue kitty what have you got going on 
he's got himself lassoed with that jig around his back and he's got the hook in the jaw. That's two on the chicken, one on the skipjack head, obviously the biggest on the skipjack head for those of you keeping track at home. I got one fella, the screen name Fishing Key Largo, that watches my ultralight videos. And he, he keeps track of everything. He keeps track of number of casts, number of fish, different species, longest streak of, of fish caught on consecutive casts. I mean, he does all that stuff for me. But I think today we're going to make his job easier because we can probably keep track of the fish that we catch unless we just get a situation where every rod's going down. If you calm down, fish, I'd have that hook at it. I'm pliers at it. There we go. Let's hold you up here. You ain't getting front camera time, but I'll hold you out. Let's get you in the light. Tell these people to hit that subscribe button. He ain't gonna do it. He don't, this fish right here don't care if you subscribe. He says he don't want you to ever watching again is what he said. There he goes. Okay. Let me dry my hands off, get all that slime off of there. We'll take a look at our chicken. Let's see if it is looking good. If it is, we'll drop it down. If not, we shall replace it. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and replace it. That's two fish on it. That little chicken nugget right there is, it's, it's served us well. Put that back up there a second. Well, it's, well, it's done wrap through the line every which way, ain't it? You want to slime off our jig there? All right. Well, bear with me here, folks. Again, I got to do everything. I can't get y'all to do nothing. You think you're out here fishing with me? While I was dealing with that fish, y'all could have done had another bait cut and had it on the line there for us. I put a couple pieces of chicken breast. This is just plain chicken breast. I cut a, put a couple pieces in a Ziploc bag here. I'm just going to take a take us a piece of it. The other piece of chicken over there, we're going to reel it up in a minute, make sure it's still on there. It ain't been touched yet, I don't think. I think that other piece is a little bigger. But you know what? That that blue that just ate the skipjack head, buddy, he didn't care about bait size, did he? He ate that. I mean, he had that dang head choked. I don't think he had the hook. I think the bait was just wedged in his mouth. It don't matter to me as long as I get a hold of him. Let's send that back down. I'm gonna get it down there and then we'll come off spot lock and get us back on the move. Normally, well, most of the time anyway, I like to just set up on a spot that I think fish are going to be working through and just sit there and wait on them. But I thought today, this style of video, it'd be best for me to move and try to put my baits in front of as many fish as possible. Just to increase our odds of catching fish. Because again, you don't want to have a situation in one of these videos where you go two or three hours and you ain't got a, you ain't got a bite. Well, this bait's still looking good. Got our jig. Tangled up there, all twisted up. No, it still look good, it just ain't been hit. Let's send it back down. But this whole concept, unedited catfish video, I have no idea how it's gonna work out, if anybody would be interested. 
but every time I have tried it with my ultralight videos, I have been pleasantly surprised at the number of views, the positive engagement from it. It seems to be a, a big hit with people, and those videos were my best performing videos of the year. They, those videos easily outperform my normal edited catfish videos. So I thought, well, we'll try it. Now this time of year, January on YouTube for fishing videos ain't really the best time to be trying new things. So it's kind of hard to get a, there's not a lot of views this time of year, regardless of what you do. So it's kind of hard to judge how something's doing performance wise this time of year. So if this video does well, well, obviously I'll know to, to keep doing it. If it don't do well, I'll probably still try this concept again later on in the spring or summer when the views pick back up and just kind of maybe to kind of get a better feel, get a better feel for it of, well, we got our motor all, cords all wrapped around up there. But in the spring and summer, when the views get back to normal, that'll be a better gauge of, of the interest in this type of video. I, I wouldn't be surprised if this video completely bombs, to be honest with you. But I thought that too, the first time I posted a video that was over three hours long ultralight fishing, I even mentioned on that video, I was like, this is, it's gonna go over like a fart in church. I'd, I almost didn't post it because I knew it had a potential to just be a total disaster. And I'll be doggone if it wasn't my best performing video of the year. It got 300 and something thousand views last time I had checked, so. You just don't know. It's one of them things you just don't know till you try it. And so it's been on the to-do list to do one of these videos. And today's the day. And according to this bird up here, we've obviously picked us a good day to do it because we're getting some fish. I fished out here recently on a normal video and I set up on the end of this point out here at the entrance of this creek and I sat here for the afternoon and I got some big fish. So they're in this area. They either in this creek or they out in the channel working into the creek periodically. Yeah, bird, I bet he lives in this creek. They probably never leave it. He won't tell me where he lives. He's afraid I'll sign him up for magazine subscriptions. That's what used to happen to crazy people. You you couldn't tell people. You know, I used to work healthcare and stuff. And, our badges there in the ER, we only had first name only. You didn't want, you didn't want people find out your last name because people with mental illness, if they find out your last name, they're gonna look you up. And you'd get stuff in the mail if they could figure out who you are. If they like you, you get bad stuff. And if, if, if I mean, if they didn't like you, you get bad stuff. If they did like you, they were some of them would send you magazine subscriptions. <laughs> you just can't, you can't make this stuff up, folks. See if I can get our speed set here again now. I want to, again, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. It'll be easier once we, once we get over around this bend or this curve, it'll be kind of a straight shot. But working, working through this little channel here, it's, uh, we're going to have to kind of keep an eye on things, make sure we don't, make sure we don't blow up on a, shallow and get everything snagged up i have been known to let myself get distracted and get all four lines <laughs> snagged and it's frustrating as all get out when it happens yeah, it's about to happen right now 44 feet here i gotta figure out Figure out which direction we need to go to. There we go. Now we're getting back in channel. We need to go this way. Slow us back down now. Okay, I see that one on the screen there and I want to lift it up. A 
lot of this right here when you're suspending baits while you're trolling or drifting that you just don't see and that's adjusting baits you want them you want them baits close to the bottom but you don't want them on bottom you start dragging with that exposed hook you're in for a bad day you're gonna get everything snagged up so as you move along and the depth's changing you want to constantly tinker with your lines there adjust them i gotta get my shades on y'all it's it's bright out here. Y'all put your sunglasses on. You're going to burn a cornea or something if you don't. Good thing about the way y'all doing this, watching from home, you don't need no sweater. Man, I'm, I'm just cold enough that, that I don't like being cold. <laughs> I'd like it to be maybe about 20 degrees warmer. That's what I'd like. Well, moving so slow, my, my little cursor there on the map card spins around some, and it's hard to see exactly which way I need to go to avoid moving up shallower. I think we need to move back this way and then go around. I definitely don't want to get snagged out here. Lord, I'll never, never hear the end of it from you. Let's look right here. We got one on the chunk. We got one on the chunk right here, folks. Fish number four. If he don't throw, if he throws this bait off, we'll put the live bait. Oh, goodness. Well, fish number four is gone, and he took the bait with him. Hmm. Well, I was about to say, if he knocked the bait off or ate it, we were going to put that live bait on. So that's what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. Come here, yellow bass. I've got just enough water. I don't know if you can see there on the angle. Yeah, you can see. Uh, I've got just enough water here in my pedal drive slot to keep a, a fish or two alive. And so this is a good opportunity to, to have kept him in here. Let me get my line untangled there. Normally I trim them fins, but we're just gonna leave it as is here for now. All right. Back up here, fish. Show yourself off to the camera there. There you go, folks. Live bait going down. We catfishing, folks. We got us some live baits. We got us a cut bait. We got us some chicken breast. We got it all going on today. We still need to get ourselves positioned in such a way that we ain't gonna run up shallow here huh? still for the life of me think we need to go to the left just raise that up a little bit another thing that concerns me with these lighter tackle rods and that uh, that smaller diameter braid is if we hook a big fish on the back rod and he gets tangled up in that, we'll have to end up cutting it. Because it's a, that thinner braid will be a nightmare to get untangled. I'm gonna speed us up again and try to get us. I gotta try to figure out where this damn channel is. <laughs> I gotta move fast enough so that that cursor goes the direction it needs to go. Okay, yeah, all right. It was to the left we needed to go a little bit. Let's just keep moving here until we can get around this part right here that comes off here to our right. It's... We should drop off here in a second once we get to that part right there. 
It may not make y'all's lives easier, but it'll make mine a whole lot easier not having to worry about getting snagged if I can keep us in the old channel. I feel like we off to a good start here today, y'all. I mean, it's just, you know, always the fear of doing this style of video. If I come out and I'm just planning on on filming a normal edited video well if i don't do any good no big deal oh there was some fish let me slow down you know it ain't no big deal it just it is what it is but you know if you come out here and you're doing an unedited video you, you best get some action <laughs> There's that fish, he's right under us. He's behind us, actually, behind the transducer. I went over him. Is he following my one of my other baits that's falling back down where we were moving so fast? There goes one up higher in the water right there. Which way is he going? I think that's a little bigger fish right there. He's swimming away from us. Can't see my jig. I think I just missed that fish by a country mile. You can see I'm out of practice on this, folks. He's swimming away. That's where I need that hand steer with the look right here. We got one on right there, though. By gosh, they got one on right here. Boy, he's gonna pull too. Look at him go. And he just come free. Boy, that's two in a row that's come free. One on the skipjack chunk and one just stole our chicken. You know, chicken thieves used to be in the old days. That was a that was a big time crime. I bet you if I called the law today, they wouldn't even file a report on that fish right there stealing our chicken nugget. I don't know if we'll bust a, a fish with a, a jig today or not on a, you know, live scope. I'm out of practice on, on casting and I don't know how many we're even going to see to get a shot at, but if we do, it'll be a fun thing to try. Let's go put another small piece on here. Small piece seems to be getting it done. A bigger piece of chicken, and it ain't that much bigger on the other rod. I wonder if it don't have something to do with the heavier sinker, maybe. It's weird. This one's been hit three times, and the other one, not at all. You know what I just did? Lord Almighty, I gotta get it together. I just put that bag of that Ziploc bag of chicken back in the cooler. I didn't put the the chicken that's on my cutting board. I didn't I didn't put it back in the bag before I put it up. Lord Almighty. <laughs> you gotta laugh at yourself. That's all you can do. Y'all talking to me and distracting me is what it was. Got to get back on the move. We're about to blow up here on this spot to the right again. Okay. Can't believe I just did that. I can, but I can't. I've done far dumber things. Okay. All right. Get that old salmonella off my hands. Yeah, all right, let's take a look here at the transducer and see what's going on around us. I've kind of, when I'm fishing like this with other rods out, 
now, especially sitting in the kayak seat i've kind of got a window here to my left where i can toss that jig just kind of toss it out there so i need to line up a fish or i need a fish to basically stump i need to stumble onto a fish that's kind of in this window that i can toss that jig to now if we didn't have all these other rods and we were just actively looking for fish moving around then we can get ourselves in position a little easier but it's uh to be able to that live scope transducer it shoots that beam out in front of you but the closer it is to you that beam's very narrow and it gets slowly wider as it goes out so when you see a fish that's 10 feet out in front of you 20 feet out it's i mean you got to hit a spot to be able to not only put that jig in front of that fish but also just to be able to see that jig fall down on your screen to know if you're in the right spot or not so i i'm i'm not very good at it i caught several fish last year doing it but i made a lot of casts to get those fish it wasn't uh it wasn't a fish on every cast type deal it's miss 15 fish and catch one type thing most of the time it was fun though i'll tell you that i mean it's it's a dang good time i gotta get me another swig of water y'all bear with me the old cotton mouth i've been yeah, I guess it's this time of year, you know, it's cold. I feel like my throat's been dry lately anyway, probably from all the snot drainage. I just ain't much on the wintertime, folks. I, I'm, I'm a fair weather fisherman, I guess you'd say. I like, I like it sunny in 75. I'd, I'd even, I'd rather deal with a hundred degree heat than a 30 degree day. I just, I don't like the cold. I don't do good in it. My body rejects cold. If I ever find me a, a sugar mama who got some money, I'm going to have her send me down south to Florida, maybe the Caribbean for the winter months. At the first sign of the leaves changing here in Tennessee, I'm going to go south and not come back to the, to the leaves turn green again. That would be the way to live, by gosh. I think, let me touch my screen here, make it bigger, which I don't know if you can see that on there well or not, but that stuff right there, that's my front baits. This one back here is one of my back ones. Or here's right here, by gosh, we didn't even see that fish. I didn't see him anyway. Saw that rod go down though. I see him on there now. Yeah, it's just, you know, that beam is it's so narrow. They got to be lined up just perfect. I'm guessing that transducer probably saw my other front bait over there because I still see a bait on the screen up front. So. Ain't that something about this rod, though? That's four bites now on this, on this rod. The other rod with a piece of chicken, nothing, not even a tap. Uh-oh, uh-oh, I felt a rod. Oh, let's, let's set this one back a second. We got something going down right here with our live bait. I felt him get hit. Something got after him. Look at him. I'm going to spot lock us here a second. We're on some fish, even though we don't see them. Or was it that bird possibly? You think that bird could have got after this thing? No, oh, I got a fish on here is what I got. It wasn't that bird. I've blamed you for something you didn't do, bird. You'll never forgive me. He's been falsely accused. We got a fish on right here. I don't think he's very big, but he's... He may have ate the fly, possibly. He did. He ate the fly under the yellow bass. Look at that. He sure did. And folks, again, unedited video. I've had people accuse me of being deceptive with these flies they don't believe that these flies are catching fish that are under my baits 
and I don't know what the hell reason they think I'd have to lie about it but right here unedited video by gosh and he's got that thing in the mouth too he ain't he ain't foul hooked with it he's ate that fly and we got another one on that front rod up there we doubled there we go say something to these these people right here you got any words of wisdom he's too young he ain't got no wisdom he's like these young kids today they don't know their butthole from their elbow well thankfully our yellow bass is still on he didn't knock him off he didn't kill him so let's send him back down and then we'll get our other one over here nice man we're on some fish it's a good time right here folks I don't know if y'all enjoying yourselves, but I'm having a good time. Okay, let's get over here and get this one down. I think what I'm going to do, before we come off spot lock and get back on the move, I'm going to switch out that sinker on that rod. Because this one's got the two ounce, the other one over here's got the four. That's the only thing difference in the rig is just the sinker size and i don't i can't imagine that would make a difference but i guess we need to find out no oh, quit fish quit quit come in here now whoo little blue kitty Where's my pliers at then lost them there how far are we into this video well, we're an hour we already got several fish uh oh, this one here's. Oh, folks, this one's ate him kind of deep. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I guess we're going to be retying two lines. Because I'm going to just, I'm going to cut this thing. He got that deep enough that I don't want to, I don't want to risk pulling it out and, and killing him and he should be okay I've, I've caught a lot of fish with with hooks in them hate to do that hate to have that to happen that was a circle hook but that is one of the problems with using smaller circle hooks is you do gut hooks and fish on a smaller one circle hooks are good about catching fish in the side of the face or side of the mouth but the smaller hooks, when they can eat the whole, the whole shebang, that'll happen sometimes. Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to, we still got our other baits here behind us, our yellow bass and our skipjack head. They're in the water right now. So we're going to, we're going to switch out these front rods. I'm going to, I can't, I just, it, I don't think the sinker is having any effect. I don't, as far as the bait, but that's the only thing different on those rigs is the sinker size. So we're just going to put on a two ounce and see if that rod will start getting hit. I tied up a few of these lighter tackle rigs here. If these fish... If they keep getting a, eating these smaller circle hooks too deep, we'll just, we'll go to a bigger size hook. I wanted a, you know, I wanted a lighter tackle set up. I wanted a, this is 30 pound line here. I wanted something for the, those small bait stealing fish or, you know, with the crappie jig under this, I thought like that yellow bass that we got up there on the end of that point. I thought if we come across any crappie or yellow bass, white bass, stuff like that, we might catch some of those too, and that would give us some extra bait out here today, with, especially with bait being at a premium today. If I, come, if I go catfishing and I got more chicken than I do skipjack, <laughs> things have... Things have not going well on a bait fishing trip i'll tell you that all right there's just a two ounce on this and let's get this one tied on we'll stick a plastic on this jig here 
just went ahead and tied up a few rigs that way we didn't waste time on this video time i hate when i'm when i'm ultralight fishing and i snag a jig in a tree and have to break off that's i always hate that because i feel like that's a good point in time for i mean it happens you go ultralight fishing with brush you're going to lose some jigs that's just part of fishing but for video purposes it's you know how it is you don't want to watch somebody retie all the time but at least with this situation here catfishing we got all these other rods out even though i'm retying we're still we're still fishing even though i'm retying get the dang thing cut okay got my other baggie now this is my this is my skipjack pack right here i keep some pre-tied skipjack rigs and some plastics and i keep it in my life jacket that way it don't matter what kayak i'm in i've got these with me and my life jacket i keep it in my car too so if i'm bank fishing I've, I've got to, I've automatically got my skipjack pack with me versus before I used to do this, sometimes I'd go out and, you know, go below a dam or something, try to catch some bait or go in the back of a creek somewhere, some bank spot, and I'd get there and realize I left my, my skipjack stuff. Oh, I'd have the skipjack rod. I'd have a cooler with me, but I'd leave the damn tackle at home. Can't tell you how many times it happened. My memory just ain't ain't what it used to be. So having this stuff always on me or in the car is a big help to making sure that I always always have what I need with me. All right, let me set that to your second. Let's get her. I think I'm just going to leave this chicken out. We're getting bit regularly enough, and it's cold enough out here today. Instead of getting in this cooler all the time, I'm just going to leave this chicken out. Ain't like it's going to rot out here as cold as it is. Alright, let's cut us another little sliver here off. We'll lower this one back down. And I'm going to reel that other one up and change out the sinker. I know that's dumb. You know, that's the only thing I can figure is maybe that sinker is just... You know what it may be, actually, now that I think about it a little more? That heavier sinker, as we move along, it may be bouncing a little bit more violently because these rod tips are so light maybe that extra movement is enough to deter fish possibly i that may be stupid i don't know obviously there's no way of knowing for sure but it's just weird we got the same bait same rigs a few feet apart and this one keeps getting hit and the other one ain't been touched Okay, that one's set now. We'll just go ahead. I'll tell you what else we're going to do. Uh, we're going to switch out this chicken, too. Maybe. Maybe we had a rotten chicken nugget on here or something. Sometimes it's like that though. You know, I've had a lot of catfish trips with with my normal baits where you just, for some reason, you have one rod that just gets hit over and over and over again. Hook through that piece of bait a couple times there. there we go. 
Yeah, I didn't know. You know, it's one of them things with these rods. I ain't never. I, I skip jackfish with them all the time, but I never. I've never tried to catch a catfish with them, so I wasn't really sure what size sinker I could get by with and what size I was going to need out here trying to keep my baits down while we're actively moving. Yeah, it's one of the things. You don't know what you don't know. But now we know we can get by with twos. So that's what we're going to use. Get that thing through there. My fingers are cold. They want to work right. All right, we're about to be back in the game here. We're going to get back moving again. Spot locked, obviously, when we got them other fish, but ain't nothing else happened while we've been sitting here retying everything. So we'll just get back on the move and see if we can't run into some more. Can't trim that line like that. I'm going to use the scissors on it. My pliers in my other kayak are still sharp enough I can trim my line with them. Those pliers there have about had it. They still work for getting a hook out of a fish, but for trimming stuff, they've they got dull. Alright, let me get this reset. I'm going to put the chicken back in the bag, but we ain't putting it in the cooler. If we stop getting bit, we'll put the chicken back in the cooler. That may jinx us here or something. We may have some bad duty by disrupting how we've done things, but we're going to try to leave it out. We'll have to keep getting back in there. There, put the sinker up, so we'll lose that. i got to do one more thing, and y'all ain't going to like it. I'm going to try to be quiet about it. i got to I gotta blow my nose. I ain't gonna blow my nose, but I'm gonna at least get the the snot that's dripping out of there. I know that's disgusting. Y'all don't wanna hear that, but by gosh, it's cold out here. All right. I won't show you my snot rag. Gotta keep a snot rag on you. I usually keep one on me year round, but especially in the winter. All right, let's come off spot lock. Our map card at, see where we're at here. Oh, we ain't covered no water at all. I mean, right there at that point, right out there is where we started. How long have we been at this now? Over an hour. We ain't covered no water, but we're catching fish right here. We're just gonna, we're just gonna keep doing what's working. Here comes the one. Right there was coming one swimming up to something right there. Yeah, oh, something got hit. I felt one of them get hit. It ain't the front, it must be in the back. I think it was our, it was our yellow bass. Maybe he didn't get hit, maybe he just got a little lively for a second. Sometimes, I'm telling you, when you're in a kayak and a live bait gets kind of jolts or you get a fish hit a bait, you can feel the whole thing. I mean, it just kind of kind of echoes like you feel it up through the kayak. But we're going we're gonna to keep moving along here. See if we can find us some more. Find us some more willing to hit something. I'd like to find something to throw that jig at. I ain't seeing nothing right now. I don't know. You know, it's weird. Obviously, there's bait in here. I mean, that that loon swimming around, he ain't, he ain't swimming around for fun. He's eating... And these fish passing through here, they're not starving to death. 
So there's bait in this creek somewhere. Now they may be farther on back, but it's weird that we're not really seeing any bait like up in the water column at all. Look, we've not seen any schools of shad or anything swim through thus far. So I'm, I'm hoping with us starting out here at the entrance and nothing out here, I think maybe as we work our way back, we're going to hopefully see some more bait. This is, I mean, I'm, I don't know if y'all happy with it, but I'm happy with how things are going. I'm telling you, that's my biggest fear today is to come out here and basically be at this point in the video and not even have a bite yet. I'm not sure, I'm not sure I'd still be filming if that, if that was the case. I may have just said heck with it. Say this is a dumb idea, I shouldn't have done it. But we're getting enough action to to, to keep me entertained, hopefully keep y'all entertained. And uh, we just having us a real fishing trip today. Now, you know, the big difference, obviously, if I had to come out here and wasn't filming this style of video, what would I be doing different? Well, I'd be sitting out on the end of this point with four big baits down. That would be what was different. But you you can troll and if you got current obviously main channel you got current you can drift cover more water put your baits in front of more fish you typically get more fish doing that but for me i find my biggest fish usually come when i'm anchored now i don't know if that's just because i do that more or what but that's that's just the way it typically goes for me but i'm, I'm never going to be shocked if we're trolling through a creek with suspended baits like we're doing today and, and hook a monster. I mean, it could happen. It's just a matter of getting your bait in front of that fish. I mean, you gotta be right place, right time, but I would never be surprised if that happens. I'll tell you something else I ain't surprised about anymore. Uh, I talked about this. I, 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 I absolutely hate social media. Now, granted, I know I'm a hypocrite saying that, because I'm on social media, right? I do this whole YouTube crap. But I hate social media. And I especially hate Facebook. It's the worst. I hate TikTok pretty bad too. It depends on the day which one I think is the worst. There was a little school of bait right there. But right now, I'm having a problem on Facebook. And I've been having a problem for a few months, but these people creating imposter accounts. I had deactivated my Facebook business page for the Kayak Catfish channel, I deactivated because I hate it. It's nothing but spam bots and politics and just, it's garbage on there. It's all the platform is. So I deactivated that page, uh, I don't know, over a year ago. Well, while it's been gone, people have been creating these fake pages. And they steal my logo. They steal my YouTube videos. Here comes a fish. He's swimming toward us. He's going to be... He's under us before I can do anything. Dang. Flapping my gums, not paying attention. Crap. Yeah, there goes one swimming pretty fast right there, too. But anyway, these imposter pages are popping up and, you know, they steal your logo and your videos and they make these posts and it looks legit. Like if somebody was searching for me on Facebook and, you know, a YouTube channel as big as mine, I think most people would assume that I would have a presence on Facebook, even though I hate it. And so they see one of these pages and they think, well, hey, that's me. That's Justin. So they send a message. And unfortunately, I've had some audience members out there that have been tricked into sending money to people they think are me on these pages. And, you know, I go through the process of trying to get the pages removed, but it's an ordeal. Uh, it, nothing works quickly on this process. It normally takes a few weeks to get a page 
completely gone from Facebook. And not only does it take a few weeks for them to act on it, but it takes me a lot of time filling out the copyright and trademark infringement reports to get it done. Cause it ain't just one report you gotta fill out. You, you gotta hit them with at least 10 copyright claims before Facebook is gonna remove their account. It's ridiculous. So I've been dealing with that a little bit. So I've reactivated my Facebook page. I'm not gonna be posting on it. Cause I, again, I hate that platform but I've reactivated my page. So I'm hoping people will find it instead of the others. And I put a video on there talking about the problems I was having with these, with these imposter accounts. But I mean, it's, it's, it's a real problem. What's going on and it's just, there's, there's no consequences for it because you know, these people who are stealing the stuff, as this rod's getting hit. I wonder if he's after the bait or the fly. The rod's bouncing around like he's got it. I wonder if he ain't got the fly. He ain't got nothing now. Let's see if he comes back for it. But I was saying, these people that are stealing content on Facebook and Instagram, TikTok, et cetera, et cetera, they have nothing to lose because there's no consequences for them. I mean, they have to get multiple, multiple copyright strikes against them. It's at least 10 on Facebook. It's at least because I've had pages that I've reported and had approved over 10 copyright claims and the page would still be up. He's back for it. I wonder if that, maybe a small fish, maybe a small flathead, maybe. He's gone now. We watched pot don't boil. Now there he is again. He made us be chewing on that head bait too. We got pieces of chicken for you bait stealers down there, fish. But you know, these, these people that are stealing it, they're in these foreign countries. They're sitting over there in these internet cafes and these foreign countries, I don't even know all of them, you know, they're just third world type countries with internet access. And they sit over there all day long, stealing videos and posting them. And, and you know, they don't care that nothing's going to happen to them. And if they can steal somebody's videos and make a few dollars in ad revenue or hit the jackpot by convincing one of you all, my audience members, or another YouTuber's audience members into thinking that they're interacting with that particular content creator and send them some money. I mean, they hit the jackpot. So it's worthwhile to them. If they make $5 in a week from ad revenue, well, that's a week's wages in some of these countries. So you, you can't, you can't win a battle against somebody who's got nothing to lose. And that's the situation we run into with these people who steal content and create these fake accounts on these platforms. Now YouTube, to YouTube's credit, they're very good and they're very proactive. Like they're constantly, the algorithm's constantly scanning. And if they match somebody else's content with yours on the YouTube studio where I go in to upload videos and stuff, there's a on part of the column on the left side, there's a thing that says copyright and you click on that. And if they've matched somebody's video with yours, you can instantly file a, a claim to have it removed and they'll have it down within a few hours. And YouTube with their copyright process, it's three strikes and you're out. So you don't have to do this five, 10, 15 reports to get a page removed. So they're very good, but Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, man, it's a, it's a process and TikTok's the worst. Facebook, if you make a claim on there, usually somewhere between one day and a week, that's how long it's going to take them to review your claim. Most of your claims are going to get denied, even though you've, you've provided documentation. I turn in a screenshot of me logged into YouTube. I turn in my trademark certification for my kite catfish logo. Uh, I, I turn in my Instagram, Facebook handles so that they can verify like it's me that's in the videos on these people's pages. And that ain't never good enough. 
they always deny the claim and then i have to follow up with basically a personalized video to them where i say hey look at me see i'm the guy in the videos and that's when they act on it but it, it, it's an ordeal but facebook and instagram usually one day to seven days it's going to take them to review they deny you follow up a few days later you finally get a you finally get a video or a post or whatever removed right and then you do that enough times you get the page removed TikTok, you file a claim on there you're going to wait three to four weeks before they get around to reviewing it and then just like facebook and instagram they're going to de deny it too and throw it back on you to provide more proof which again every time they do this i always just provide them the same information that i provided on the the original report but it's just it's it's just a never-ending battle and i fear this is my conspiracy theory fear on this put on your 10 full hats or take off your toboggans put on your 10 full hats for this one as technology and especially ai gets better in the next few years it's coming it's you know joe rogan talks about it all the time ai is coming whether we want it or not it's happening one of the things that i think is going to hurt obviously a lot of good things are going to come from ai i mean listen i ain't against technology by any stretch there's a lot of advances in modern medicine a lot of good stuff is coming from technology right but i think one of the negative impacts especially with content creation is going to be when the technology gets to the point that you can take someone's image and create a video with it now that already exists to a point i know the adult industry has had some issues with that and the deep fakes have been around for a few years now but as that technology gets better and these deep fakes get better these people sitting over in pakistan and you know india and all these other little internet cafes that are currently stealing people's content and posting it to their page they're just going to be able to steal your image or your likeness and create new content and post it to their page and when that happens how do you file how can you even file a copyright claim because you don't have anything to match what it is that's on their video you know that that's going to be that's going to open up a big can of worms on that like i don't even know I don't even know what when, when that happens i don't even know how you're going to have a rebuttal to that other than just the fact that it's going to look like you on the video so i think that's coming now you know is it going to be a problem for fishing videos you know probably not right away i mean when these when this technology gets to a point where it's really good it'll be they'll be going after the politicians and the and the videos that actually make money and stuff not lowly old fishermen like me but it'll eventually like everything trickle its way down and get to that point and uh i don't i don't know what the solution is going to be when it happens i i have no idea i just don't think it's going to be a good situation for anybody that is a content creator or anybody like you all out there in the audience who likes watching content i think it's going to cause problems i just hope if somebody steals my image and likeness and makes a video with it i hope they at least make the fish bigger in that video than what i normally catch i hope they'll at least ai generate some hundred pounders for me that's the least they can do if they're gonna steal from me make sure i get some hundred pounders on film by gosh i don't know what's gonna happen with that it's uh it's a crazy world we live in and, and uh, you know all these technology companies i i touched on this in that facebook video i made when i reactivated my account like there's a reason why that facebook and tiktok why they drag their feet reviewing these claims and they try to look for reasons to deny them to buy them more time it's because they need content these platforms and youtube falls into this too the social media platforms they make their money by selling advertisement space to companies who put commercials and ads and stuff on videos 
And so for them to sell that ad space, they have to have content to be able to put those ads on. And uh, you take a, a platform like Facebook specifically that most content creators, most content creators will have a, pre if you got a big YouTube channel or big TikTok, you will have a Facebook page, sure. And you might even post some videos on there. But you didn't make those videos for Facebook. You made them for YouTube or TikTok and you just also post them on Facebook. Nobody makes content specifically for Facebook. There's no reason to. Their, their ad rates, or at least what they share with the content creators, it's awful. The platform is nothing but bots and spammers. I mean, I could just, I could, I could go on for an hour about how bad I hate Facebook, right? So it's just not worthwhile to do that. But they need content. Right, And since content creators aren't making content for them, when people like the people I've mentioned, these, these people that create the fake accounts, the imposters, when they steal content and post it on Facebook, well, content, Facebook can still run ads on that regardless of whose content it is. So it don't matter to them. So it's in their best interest to drag their feet so they don't have to remove that content so they can keep running their ads and, and keep selling that, that ad space. So. It's just, that's going to continue to get worse, I think, as time goes on. You know, in these, in these other countries, like I said, I mean, if they can get $5 in ad revenue, they can spend all day, every day in an internet cafe and end up making $5 at the end of the week. Well, that's oftentimes more than a week's wages in some of the countries that they're in. So it's worthwhile to them. No consequences. Even if you figured out who they were, it's not like you could sue them. I mean, being in America and them in a foreign country, and even if you could, what are you going to take them for? They got nothing. So it's, like I said, it's it's a it's a war you can't win. You you just you you you're fighting against somebody with nothing to lose, and that's never a situation you want to be in. But I hate seeing people in the audience get taken advantage of. I just hate it. You know, it's just it it just sickens me. You know, and I and I don't know, I don't know how to prevent it because these pages pop up and they look legit, and somebody just sends a message through there thinking they're talking to me, saying, "Hey, uh, I like your videos, whatever," and then that person responds back pretending to be me, saying, "Hey, thank you for watching. So happy you reached out. I want to give you something. I just need you to cover the shipping, and you can have this, you know, whatever they're offering." and People then send that money to cover those shipping charges. That's been the scam going on lately. And, you know, they're out the money just like that. So it sucks. I think Facebook and these other platforms ought to be held responsible for it. Especially when it happens on a page that I've reported and they've drugged their feet and not done anything about it and then somebody gets scammed. They should absolutely, Facebook should absolutely have to pay for whatever damages that person's incurred. But what are you going to do? You're going to, you're going to spend a fortune having a lawyer write a letter for you, and that's more than you would ever get back even if you won, and you're not going to win because it's a huge corporation that has a, a gazillion dollar legal team. So the situation just sucks is what I'm getting at. I ain't trying to be a negative Nancy and be a complainer on here, but it's just reality. That's just the world we live in today. I don't know what to do about it. I don't have a solution other than to keep wasting hours of my time filling out copyright forms so I can eventually get pages removed that just pop back up two or three days later. Yeah, you know, that's just, that's the routine. That's the process. Anyway, y'all don't want to hear about all this crap. But by gosh, let me tell you, if you was out here in a boat with me fishing today, this would be the kind of crap you would be hearing me complain about. <laughs> so it's just, this video, man, it's just like you were out here fishing with me. It's the exact same. We just out here talking about life and solving the world's problems. I got a lot of solutions for the world's problems, but I ain't got the power or authority to, to do any of it. I'm sure y'all out there thinking the same way. A bald eagle over there somewhere. I'm looking in the sun. I can't see. I heard him.
pretty sure that's bald eagle. I can't see. Or if that's, that goes another bird to slip out of the tree. There's some bald eagles out here. We might see one today, but I thought that's what I heard. Huh. Well, yeah, we just keep making our way through this creek here. Like I said, it's kind of, we're going to have a straight shot down through here once we kind of round off from this. There's another, the contours kind of come out this way, and we'll, once we get looped around over here, we're going to be straight shot. Been a while. I feel like it's been a while since we had a bite, though. I'm getting impatient. I'm ready to catch another one. I ain't seeing no birds working back down that way. It's also out in the main channel. I ain't seeing nothing working back there. Still ain't really seeing nothing on the screen. We make our way back. We get back down through here, you know, two or three hundred more yards. And we still ain't seeing nothing, ain't seeing no bait, and ain't getting bit. We're, I might just reel everything up and go back out here toward the mouth of this thing. Maybe these colder temps we've had have possibly moved things out to the deeper, deeper channel, maybe. I don't know. I ain't fished much lately with the holidays and the weather. I just ain't, I just ain't been fishing as much. This time of year, I, like I said, I ain't much on the cold. I tend to hibernate a little more. I'd like to, I'd like to get another ultralight trip in, but it's kind of, this time of year, a lot of days the wind is up enough to ultralight fishing's kind of tough to do. And then of course you got to get on some fish pretty hit or miss i'm just not a very good wintertime fishing for well, wintertime fisherman for any species really i catch some big cats in the winter but it's kind of a it's inconsistent more inconsistent in the winter for me than the spring and summer i guess because i just don't fish as often but we've been on some out here today at least i'm ready to catch some more though I'm impatient, y'all. I'm impatient. I know I know y'all want y'all ain't reeled in a fish yet. I've had my hands full with doubles a couple times. Y'all just sitting on your hands. Waiting on me to do everything around here. I'm really I'm surprised and I'm happy that we ain't seen no other boats out here. It's a weekday. I imagine people's back at work today after after the New Year's holiday. But still, I thought we'd see somebody out here. And my regular viewers know I hate talking on camera and, and when there's people in earshot, so it's a lot better for me that there's nobody out here. It's really helping our calls here. Once we get once we get close to sunset though, some people maybe get off work. A reasonable hour they might come out and fish last couple hours of daylight or something but so far so good there's only like two like two other vehicles at the launch i used when i got here so i don't know where them people are at but hopefully they catching more fish than we are at this moment I've got my speed right now at 0.4, but I think I'm gonna have to. I think I'm gonna have to slow down because you look at my look at that line right there. You see how it's kind of coming back at an angle. That means that bait has come up in the water column with the the resistance of that lighter sinker. It's just bringing everything up. That's why I like uh, my normal catfish rods, my heavier setup. I use eight ounces. That way I can troll at a half a mile an hour and keep everything vertical under me. That eight ounces is kind of that magic number for a, a half a mile an hour movement. Uh, the two ounces, it's just gonna bring stuff up a little higher, which with the live scope, like you can see oftentimes, you can, I can find my baits on there now. 
think that's my back baits right there. I can't even see my front baits now. I was trying to, <laughs> I was going to try to say with live scope, at least maybe I can sometimes see, but that I can't, I can't see a damn thing on there right now. So it's just, it, you know, it is weird. We're just not seeing, we're just not seeing a lot of bait. Not seeing it, not a lot. Heck with that, we're not seeing any bait back in here. And the further we're getting back in here as we move along, we're not getting taps or anything. We may end up going out, turning around and going back out, y'all. I want to go back a little further into this thing, but. You know, it's the old saying, you don't leave fish to go find fish. And we know we had at least some fish out here toward, uh, toward the creek mouth. The further we get back in here, we ain't seeing it. So we may have to, we may have to make a change. That'd be all right. I'm adaptable. I'm gonna lower this screen down a little bit though. I'll tell you some changes I've made on the live scopes. There's a there's a nice mark. Which direction is that? Oh, where'd he go? Ah, oh, lost sight of him. Where'd he go? I think he's he's behind us. I've got that transducer pointed the other way. He's swimming behind us now. That and snuck up on us. He would have been a good one to possibly get being that high up in the water. I don't know what he is, but that gummit. Anyway, I was about to say on the live scope, I've made some changes to my settings. So when I first got this thing, what I wanted was the screen to be relatively clear. I like a clean screen. That's what I thought I liked anyway. So I had my noise reject, ghost reject, and TVG on medium. And that did clean up the screen a lot, but it also made it very difficult to see the lighter, the smaller jigs when I would be crappie fishing, ultralight fishing. I have since, look at this right here. I'm trying to tell a story about live scope. Now we got airplane man about to do a crash landing right over here on top of us. He's running that plane about, about 50 feet up. Is he going to land that thing right there? Or is he really going to crash? I ain't got, I don't think I can zoom on this camera very good without messing up the quality. He may be going down, y'all. You know? I don't know if that's one of them water planes or if we got a crash landing right here on video. We might be about to go viral. He's landing. That's a controlled, he's got to just be landing because he went down too easy. I think if it's, oh, now he's speeding back up. That's got to be one of them water planes. That's one of them people's got more money than brains. I've watched Jaws in the past, all right? I ain't, uh, you wouldn't get me one of them things. Now he's probably going to come back this way and interrupt our commentary some more. Well, I thought I thought we was about to go viral here, y'all, with a crash landing right here on a dang river. He had me fooled for a minute. Anyway, I was talking about this dang live scope and the settings. So initially, I thought I wanted the clean screen. And you adjust your settings, you can clean everything up on there. But it makes it harder to see your smaller jigs if you do that. Here we go. We finally got this rod hit. We put a lighter sinker on, we finally get one hit right here. To be continued on the story. For those of you who give a crap about live scope settings. Got a got interrupted by a fish here, and I'm happy it happened too. Been a while here, been too long. 
I'm getting impatient. Catching them on the slider, bass tackle. It's fun, man. I think you got another line over there. What's well, gonna be a mess to untangle with this braid? Yeah, he did. What'd you get in that other line for? The old thing. Oh, let's bring the fish in here. He's got you, he's got your line tangled. Oh, he's ate the jig. He ate the, the crappie jig. Let me have it. Well, fiddlesticks. Hang on, fish, hang on. There we go. Let me get this line out from under him here before we get it even tangled up even more. Well, there's you another fish, y'all, another small one, but that one ate. Uh... Meanwhile, look at that as I let him go. That was one we could have thrown a... Uh, the bigger jig at right there. He's right there under us now, though. Missed our chance. Okay. Lord, look at this. He has wrapped this thing up. See, this is why I don't like using lighter line, at least braid anyway. Mono, you can, you get your lines tangled with that heavier mono. Like, I normally use 40-pound mono. It'll untangle pretty easy because it's thicker, you know? When these catfish get down there and roll with this, with braid, especially if it's thin braid like this, boy, it's a mess. I'm going to try to figure out which direction this mess is going here. Unedited people, raw and uncut. You watching me untangle, untangle this line. <laughs> I'll get it by gosh. It's like, it's like them little girls and, and middle school or whatever braiding each other's hair and stuff. The way this has all come together here. Well, that fish done a number on us. I wish he hadn't a bit now. You know what I think? Let's take our chicken off a minute. Let's just work that line down there off the off this he somehow got it up here on this hook he done a number on us he did not want me telling y'all about the live scope settings he knew i've got them settings dialed in he don't want y'all knowing about it because he knows y'all be out here trying to catch him too We got it off our main hook at least. We're about to get it off this one too. I'll have to reel that other one in, make sure we still got bait on it. Make sure it ain't all tangled up. To, we need that other rod over there to get hit while I got this all, all this mess going. That would be a, that would be a show. Okay. Crisis averted here. Let me get myself spun back around. We're going here in circles while I'm fooling with that mess. Let's get everything situated, and I'm going to tell you how I've changed these live scope settings and how I like them so much better now. Even though I still can't catch a fish with that live scope if my life depended on it. All right. Back down this goes. Let me slow down here a second and get that thing back down there. Okay. 
Okay. That done. Now let's just reel this one up and take a look, make sure we still got bait on. I think we do, but just to be safe. Yep, all right, we're good. Do that. We're at 40 feet now, so I probably need to bring my other baits up a little bit. Get those reset. And then, maybe, finally, I'm going to tell you about these damn live scope settings and why I've changed what I've changed. Okay. There's that. I like these baits about two or three feet off the bottom. You definitely want them within five feet of the bottom when you're doing this style of fishing. But you gotta keep an eye on things as your depth changes. You like I said, <laughs> that'll ruin your day quick when you get all four lines snagged at one time. But anyway, so these live scope settings, I was watching a I'd give him credit if I could remember what podcast it was on, but it was it was a crappie fisherman. And he was talking about how a lot of people are like me and that they want the screen to look really clean, but we're we're thinking about it the wrong way. Instead of having the screen as clean as possible, what we need is to be able to see fish and our jigs as good as possible. And so he recommended, he, he ran his, his unit, he had a Garmin, with everything turned off. TVG, ghost reject, noise reject, everything off. And he had his color gain, which is not the gain here on the main screen. And you adjust that up and down to kind of compensate for your depth and various stuff. But the color gain's a different setting. He had it on like 85. And so I turned all my stuff off. And, and cranked my color gain up. And when you when you do that, you get a lot of clutter on the screen. Like, you know, you see your, your beam here coming off. A lot of times you'll have a ghost tree, especially in shallower water or on super bright sunny days where the sun's right on top of you. There'll be a big ghost tree right there. But you can see fish so much better. And more importantly, I can see my jig so much better, especially like if I'm throwing a 164th ounce jig, I used to never be able to see it with my settings the other way. But with everything turned off, I can see even that small jig fall down. So, you know, again, a little more clutter, but worthwhile for being able to see a little better on there. At least I think so anyway. And that guy... And again, I wish I could remember his name. I'd totally give him credit, but he was saying when you have everything turned off, the screen is faster. Like the, the processor in there, it's faster because when you've got all of those, uh, you know, the TVG, noise reject, ghost reject, all that stuff, it, 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 it kind of slows things down and it's not, it's not a huge slowdown. But that fraction of a second sometimes can make a difference on catching a light biting fish or not. And so uh, he, he, he claims that the screen is faster. So I'll take his word for it. He seemed pretty, pretty knowledgeable, certainly a lot more knowledgeable on this stuff than what I am. I'm envious of those fellas that crappie fishing and they go through creeks and backwaters and stuff and they see fish all the time like up a few feet below the surface there and they just drop that jig down to them and pull up a two pounder when i'm working through these creeks and stuff i mean i never see i never see crap when i see crappie they're always on brush I, don't, I never see just random crappie just up in the water column just sitting there i wish i did I see a fish right there, 40 feet out. He's directly to the side of me. I don't think we'll get him. He's, he's a really long cast away. Let's try. How close did I get? I got pretty close. I'm following down. I've lost sight of him. 
just reel this thing in slow. I've lost sight of him. I don't know if he's around it or not. Kayak's moving this way, and he was that way. I got pretty close. Horseshoes and hand grenades, though, don't matter. Yeah, I've lost sight of him. Another one, I think about. Well, he's right there under me now. We got something at our back bait. See that right there? That's a fish right there at our back bait. Be nice if he'd eat one of them. Don't know which back bait he's on, but he's right there at it. You see that a lot with live scope. Fish come up and Swim around your bait, look at it, never touch it. I've thought a lot about taking, taking this thing off. My best, my most fun trips, here's a fish up in the water column. We're coming up on him too, by gosh. We may have a shot at this one right here. 35 feet out, if he'll stay He'll stay in that general area right there. We're going to have a chance at busting him. I lost him. Where did you go, fish? Where did you go? See, like, <laughs> I mean, we had that fish lined up on the screen, and all of a sudden he's gone. I have no idea where he disappeared to. Maybe there he is right there. Gosh, he's just barely. I wonder if we're not looking at him like dead on right there so he's not showing up real good. I'm just going to toss over there. Let's just, let's just get in that general area and just see what happens. Doo-doos and giggles. I didn't make that cast far enough. Yeah, I don't see him. Yeah, another missed opportunity right there, folks. Y'all should have, y'all should have been all over it. As soon as we saw that fish, you should have fired out a cast, and you didn't. You sit right there on your couch or at your job, wherever you're at. Some of you's out there, you're watching this while you're driving a, a big truck right down the road. You could have made a cast and you didn't. You let that fish get away. Well, I was saying, I've been, I've, I've thought a lot about getting rid of this live scope just because i mean i have i feel like i have more fun without electronics i mean my most fun trips this past year was probably those trips i guess it was september october there i was fishing out of my pedal kayak no motor no graph just back to basics man i'm catching big fish catching some big flatheads just having a good time. You get home, you don't have any batteries to charge or nothing, you know, just, you just, I, I, I mean, I feel like I'm more accomplished when I go home having caught fish with, without the aid of any technology. And so in a perfect world, I would have that feeling of accomplishment and success all the dang time. But in reality, I'm, especially if I go to a new body of water that I'm not familiar with, it's nice to have at least some electronics to be able to confirm where you think you are on a particular structure, especially if you're setting up to anchor on a spot. Especially when fishing like I normally like to do, like I like to suspend baits 
and you know i've got to be precise if, if you're setting up on a spot and you're anchored and you're casting baits out every direction you don't necessarily have to be so precise on your anchoring spot because you know you're fan casting baits out you're just covering a wide area but if i'm anchored down a spot and i drop my baits directly below the kayak well the circumference those fish have to swim through to pick up on the scent of my baits it's a small area it's a small footprint so i have to be very precise i have to make sure that i am set up exactly where i need to be to get those fish as they move along in and out of an area and you know i know out here where i fish i've got that navionics app on my phone it's very accurate for the area that i normally fish at but when you go to some other bodies of water some places i mean if you've never been there before you don't know whether or not navionics is accurate and some places like the ohio river for instance i went up there to indiana for that tournament this past fall navionics man what a what a joke if i if i paid for navionics and i lived up there i'd be ticked man here we got another one we got another one right right here in front of us i oh, lost sight of him where'd he go oh he's swimming he's dropped down oh my gosh we were right there we got close to him oh. yeah as quick as he showed up he's gone let me move this around here see if he's still around i don't see him now but navionics man it was so far off on the ohio river like it was no point in even having the map card even going because it was just it was useless you had to just i had to use my graph and just kind of cozy up to the channel edge and kind of keep myself on it as i went along because it was just i mean it was amazing how far off it was so situations like that i obviously need some electronic assistance but my trips my trips where i go out just bare bones basic i have more fun with those than than any other trip we got another fish right there near our front baits i'm about to raise these up here we're 37 feet now Raise them up just a little bit more. Let's get these front baits too. I know that fish is still down there by it, but we're gonna we're gonna be dragging bottom if we ain't careful. for two hours on this already i feel like the day i feel like this trip has went at least for me anyway it feels like it's went by pretty quickly for those of you that are still watching if there's five or six people left still watching this point in the video you're, you're probably thinking this is like paint drying but i'm having a good time i do still feel like we're seeing less fish the further we get back in here definitely getting less bites as we move along i should have when i got out here i should have just made a quick run down through this creek with the with the electronics and just see if there were schools of bait or you know any concentrations of fish the way i would have been better prepared but you know what this is a real fishing trip by god and a real fishing trip i i wouldn't have done that <laughs> i would have just come out and started fishing so that's what we done by gosh there is another fish right up here right on the surface right there 35 feet out 
face that direction. Behind him. Can I bring it up here? I don't know if I spooked him or or what, but either way I didn't get him. Landed behind him. That was too far. And again, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea where he went. Maybe him right there. I think he's still out there. About 30 feet right over here in this direction now. Oh, I got close right there. He's following it. Oh, he followed it, y'all. He's still following it. He's following. Man, that thing's almost back to me. He's right here. And there he turned. I don't know if you can see on the screen right there. He just turned right there when we got back. Right there he goes again. Let's see if I can get his attention again. He followed that a long ways. I missed him that time. He's swimming down now. He's all the way down here now. That's that same fish. I mean, he chased it all the way back. Yeah, he's swimming away. I'll never get him. I'm telling you, that's the thing right there. I mean, you got to be. You know, those crappie guys, when you watch them on video, when they're live scoping, and they, they'll move right up on a fish because that fish will be stationary, just sitting there. What I find with the catfish and other types of species of fish is you often see them You'll see them on your screen, but they're moving, they're swimming. They're not just sitting still waiting on you. And that makes it a challenge to get everything kind of lined up and figure out where your transducer's pointing and make a cast and everything. I was doing it enough last winter that I was getting, I was getting a little better at it, but I'm clearly out of practice. It takes some time of casting out and seeing where your jig hits to kind of get it dialed in on how hard you need to cast to, or to toss out to land at the precise distance. That's just one of them, one of them practice things. You gotta put in some reps. But I'm definitely, I mean, as we've made our way along, I mean, this, this creek here, I mean, there's just not a lot in it. At least not right now, anyway. Not this part. Thirty-five feet now. I'm gonna turn the map back on. I think I'm, I think I'm creeping over here to this left bank. I probably need to. Yeah, we need to get back over here to the right. Y'all sitting here watching this dang live scope screen, we're going to be running up on the shore. You're all distracted drivers is what you are. Need to get your act together so we can catch some fish out here today. Right there comes something. Is that, which direction is that transducer pointing? So this is what I'm talking about. You get a little speed going here. Drop down on that thing. Oh my gosh, I'm about to hit him, I think, with it. Boy, I've put it right there on him. Look at him right there. That's my jig right there in front of him. He's coming up. There's two of them. My baits are coming back down now. My baits are sliding back down into place. Couldn't get him to look at it. Dang. But yeah, like situations like that with that other kayak that I'm that I'm working on building out. If I'm moving along and I'm moving too quick and all of a sudden I see a fish and I need to stop or slow down, 
if I got this motor, I got to spin that head all the way around to be able to to go in reverse, basically. But that other kayak with the hand steer, I'm gonna be able to turn the lever and be able to straight back straight up, and then I'll still have that transducer facing the direction I need to. At least in theory, anyway. We'll see how practical it is. That's the that's the big question. How practical is it going to be once I get it on the water? And I'll hopefully get it on the water later this week, assuming that those washer clamp things are in the mail today. We'll see. Be a nice surprise to come home to those. I'll have to... I'll have to... I think I still got the hardware where I bought the live scope and all that. I think it came with the hardware needed to mount it to a trolling motor, I think. I've got a packet of stuff. I should have already looked at that to make sure it is. I just assumed that's what I needed. If not, I'll rig up something to mount it on there. But once it's on there, it's going to be there for a little while, at least until I try it out, because it's not going to be convenient to switch back and forth between this kayak and that one, since I've got this transducer currently mounted on a pole over here so but it's just one of them things you know if it if it works out in reality like i've got it worked out in my mind it's it's got a lot of potential to really let us you know have some fun really catch some more fish see some more fish so we'll see here comes another fish. But uh, here he's way out there though. He's like 40 feet out. We'll see if we can ease up to him here a little closer. Let's see which way my transducer's pointing. There's some more out there behind it too. I need to be casting right in front of that motor, I think. 25 feet. I don't know where my jig went. Oh, there's my jig. Okay. Boy, I'm going to be right there near him. He's, he's swimming down. Lost sight of him and my jig. There's another fish right there. Oh, man. Botched it. Thought we was going to get a chance at that one. There he is. I see him now. He's over here. I assume that's the same fish. We got him again. He's... All right. Here goes my jig down. I don't know if y'all can see that there, but I'm boy, I'm about to I'm about to put it right on him. I've got it right in his face. Oh, I pulled it up. Oh, we got this rod going down. Oh man, that's a nice takedown right there, y'all. Oh, did he just let it go? Is he still on there? I'm piddling around with this. We gotta pick this rod up and see. Is he still on there? Yeah, he's still on there. Yeah, man. That was a nice takedown, and then he comes straight up with it. Yeah, buddy. This is on that, that uh, head bait. That's a big bait. We've had it down there the whole time. It's the only one I got. We've got. We've worked our way back in here and ran into some more fish, apparently. Let's see what this thing is. I think this has got potential. Ah. Uh, is he foul hooked? I've got him by the stinger in the back. That's foul hooked, y'all. He's a decent fish, though. He's a fun sizer, but he's he's hooked in the back. This fish right here is dumb. He don't even know. He don't even know how to eat a bait. I hope he don't sling that thing off either. I know it's been on there a couple of hours now, but it's the only one we got. With this water being so cold, it probably ain't bled out very much. 
I'm gonna have to get hold of this thing. He's... Normally, I don't like bringing fish in that are foul hooked. Uh, Y'all don't deserve it. Can't even, can't even eat a bait in the mouth. But I'm gonna have to to get this thing out. Oh, there it come. We just pulled it out. All right. Yeah, normally I don't like rewarding fish that have got themselves foul hooked. They don't deserve it. But I thought we was gonna have to on that. And I'm glad he didn't knock that bait off. When you ain't got but one skipjack head, it's seen better days, but it got his attention, didn't it? Down it goes. Yeah, it was a nice takedown. I wonder, I wonder if he tried eating that bait. And that's what I seen when the rod was going down hard. And then when it come back up, he had let it go, but then it snagged him in the fin. We'll never know, obviously, but I'm sitting on my pliers. But, uh, yeah. Well, we ran into some fish. We saw some there on the screen, and then that was a decent one there that got himself a foul hook. So maybe we're running into some more here. So we make our way further on back. 35 feet deep currently. There's a couple more right there on the bottom. I think my... I'm going to bring these baits up a little bit. Uh, maybe they're okay. <laughs> I like seeing them rods go down. Whether they foul hooked or got the bait in the mouth, it gets my heart rate going all the same when I see them rods bury over like that. Especially when it's on a on a rod that's got a big bait. Let's see what we can do with that fish right there at about 20 feet out. About 15 feet. He's coming toward me. I've cast too far. He's already swam under the kayak before my jig's going to get down there. He's headed back down there toward my back baits. I hope I get his attention. But you know what, the, it's probably a good thing that I've brought the smaller chickens out today, chicken nuggets, because that's where most of the action has come from. Better quality fish, obviously, on the, the skipjack head, but the action keep us entertained while we wait on the other. Let's throw it this one. Well, I'm just going to drop that thing straight down and try to get to him before he swims under me. I don't think it's going to get there. Get down there, Jig Boy. It's going to be close. See if I can get his attention. I can't see the fish no more. He was swimming toward bottom. My jig was... Dead gun it. I want to catch one on this jig so dang bad. I want it to happen so bad, y'all just don't know. These fish don't care what I want to happen. No, they ain't got no, no respect. These fish don't give a crap. They're like them. They're like them police and fire trucks and stuff with the loud sirens go by in the middle of the night and you trying to sleep and sirens going down the road ain't nobody on the road at my house at two o'clock in the morning but by gosh they got them sirens going full blast as they go by yeah you know maybe some y'all out there know this maybe it's common knowledge i don't know who who determines on the sirens like what decibel level they're at how loud they are i mean is it like standard is there some kind of standard set out there for how loud they're supposed to be 
is it just up to the person driving the emergency vehicles how loud they are because i mean really at two o'clock in the morning in my house as far away from my house is from the road i shouldn't be hearing no damn sirens but boy i do they wake you up the so dang loud now i just don't believe they need to be that loud especially at that point in the night i mean if i can hear it all the way at my house to the point it wakes me up any cars they're coming upon even with doors closed windows rolled up and the radio on they're going to be able to hear it if they don't already see the lights and stuff that are flashing and going on i don't know maybe some of y'all out there know that i sure as heck don't we got some fish right here this one's interesting He's 55. We got one right here close on us. This one right out here looks a little bigger. He's 50 feet out. I think I'm going to throw. I kind of want to throw at that one there that's closer. Get lined up on him again. I've lost sight of the other one. I think he's moved out. Moved out of range. I've missed that one. That's way off. I need to I need to find him again. I need to make it farther. Oh, oh, we got one on a chicken here. Hold on. Let's put that down a second. Something hit it. Did he not hook up? He didn't hook up, I guess. Something hit him. I think something hit him anyway. Did I imagine that? I may have imagined it. One of y'all hit the rewind in a minute and see if I imagine it or not. I'd like to see where that that bigger mark that was out about 50 feet away. I don't know where he's got off to now. That fish probably heard this transducer beam going down through there. It's probably like these transducer beams to fish are probably like emergency sirens to me when I'm trying to sleep. Probably spooks them off. I don't see him now though. I still say our better action was out there toward the entrance of this creek. just kept thinking we're gonna maybe run into something back here or, but i'm not even seeing what once you look back there toward the land like i'm not seeing any birds back there nothing nothing's working you would think if there was a lot of shad back there in the shallows that there would be birds flying around this colder weather we've had may have it may have pulled them out my my um wait, what's the word i'm looking for? i'm having a brain cramp temperature gauge thermometer or it tells you the water temperature on the screen <laughs> i don't know why my brain ain't working it says 47 but my experience with garmin is when i had the garmin and the rain marine both hooked up they were about two degrees different the, the garmin or the ray marine was always about two degrees warmer so i would assume that the 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 real temp was somewhere in between those two so that says 47.6 i would assume the water temperature is probably 48 49 degrees that would be my guess colder than i want to go swimming in that's for sure i see another decent mark there coming in will he keep that same path going for us to throw at him he's still a long ways off i lost him there's another one right there let's take a let's take a a try at this one I want to be short of him. He's coming, or I'm coming up on him with the direction I'm currently going. Got 
Got another fish coming in behind us there. Side of him. I don't know why I'm whispering. Hey, him right there. Let me, let me try to make another. Let me try to make another throw at him. We got one behind us and one right there, practically at the motor. I think that one fish is at my back baits. Yeah, that didn't, that didn't go like I'd hoped. I do think that fish there, I can barely see him, but I think he's near my, my back baits. He needs to eat one of them, by gosh. It's time to doo-doo or get off the pot, fish. We got a... We got an audience watching here. Maybe three or four of them still left. Try to get him lined up on that screen again. Yeah, there he is. He's going to the right now. I'm going to throw out there. I don't know if I'm going to get anywhere near him. No, that was behind him. That wasn't a good cast either. Man, he's sitting right there. He, he's one we could, in theory, if I could get my, my cast done right. Can't see my jig. I ain't casting the right direction. If I was casting in the right direction, we'd see our jig following me. Ah, uh, here comes a boat, too. Man, that fish is just sitting there, and I can't get a cast on him if my life depended on it. I'm going to turn this transducer around here. Okay, I think he's, I need to throw this direction, about 20 feet. I ain't got that thing lined up right. No, I don't. You can see him sitting there though, I mean, he's a fairly large fish. I just can't, again, I do better casting off the, the left side, I'm gonna, this is dumb. I'm gonna spin around. That way I can cast off the damn left side of the kayak and hopefully that fish will just continue to set just like he is. Oh, I'm gonna lose him. I have lost him. I have lost him. That was my fear. I had him lined up. They moved, and he may have moved while I was moving. I could have made 20 more casts and not hit that damn fish. <laughs> I mean, so frustrating. Kitten. Thought I was going the right direction, but again, if you don't land that jig right in that that beam of the transducer, you're not going to see it. And when the transducer's on my left, and I got to turn toward my right, I can't line everything up and really see it like I need to. Basically, I'm making a bunch of excuses here, y'all. You got to have an excuse. It can't just be that I suck at this. It's got to be a reason. Yeah, he's gone now, though. Daggummit. Now, we've had that boat work back in here. That boat went on back, I think. Oh, I see him over there. Ah, 
I mean, we're seeing some more fish back through here, but we're not really getting bit. We were getting, I'm about to talk myself into going back out toward the front of this creek, y'all. That's what I'm about to do. Because the sun's just falling on down in the sky. We ain't got but a couple more hours, maybe. I might get several more fish. But yeah, that transducer beam, it's so narrow. You land your jig outside of it, you just ain't gonna see it fall. And when your back's turned to the transducer, it's hard to know exactly where you're casting. I'm gonna try right here, maybe. One thing about the fish we are seeing back here, I'm off by a mile. Uh, one thing we are seeing is we're seeing fish that are up. Not so much along the bottom, just they're, they're actually up in the water column. Now, are they cats? I don't know. It could be something else. Could be drum, could be carp, buffalo. Who knows? Last year when I was doing this, I caught, I caught a variety of species. I caught several drum, if memory serves me with the jigs. They were pretty aggressive toward the, the jigs too when you get it in their face. That bird's over there working, buddy. He's he's finding him some dinner tonight. He said he's gonna get his fishing done early and call it an early night for him. He's probably got something on TV to watch. He won't be watching Alabama football no more this season, really. <laughs> yeah, I gotta tell you, I'm an old Vols fan. We won our bowl game. How'd Alabama do? I guess the the tide people would tell me at least they made the playoff. But I think everybody in Tennessee was a was a Michigan fan <laughs> during that game. Happy to see old Bama lose. I don't really give a crap who wins between Michigan and and Washington. Don't make a bit of difference to me, but I'm glad. Bama ain't in there, and I'm glad Georgia wasn't in there. Here comes that boat again. He didn't make three casts back there. These bass boats, they just kill me. They run into an area. They make about five casts. Then they, then they back on the move again. He didn't even have time to fish back there. He must went back there and was looking for something and didn't see it. Maybe he was somebody that was back there looking for some bait and there wasn't nothing back there. I'm having a hard time not going back out there. Y'all, let's see if he is here. Or if you could teleport through the screen and actually talk to me right now, you'd tell me one way or the other what we should do as far as continuing the path or going back out there where we was getting more action. This loon's back here, but I think he's just following us. He's giving me more credit for being a better fisherman than I am. When he sees this video and sees how many fish we actually caught, he's gonna realize he put his faith in the wrong person. I don't know if loons have YouTube or not. If he does, he's probably watching it on a flip phone. He ain't got no he ain't got no iPhone. He's probably one of them. That loon's probably got a droid, and when he text messages somebody, it's green. I don't know why that bothers me, but it does. Like when I I'm at a point in my life now where if I if I have a friend that's a friend enough that I'm contemplating giving them a phone number versus just having them email me or facebook messenger like if i'm actually giving out my phone number i want to know that they've got an iphone that when they text me their messages are going to show up in blue because if it shows up in green it's 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 just going to bother me it shouldn't but it does 
And I don't think I'm alone in this. I think there's a lot of people out there that want their messages to be blue. You know what I want more than anything? I want a dang fish, y'all. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put y'all Okay, boy, my screen's... I thought, man, that screen's done quit on me. My, my dang camera shut off. I'm going to set y'all up here a minute. Y'all set up there in the front seat a minute. Here's what we're going to do. I can't help myself. We're going to go back out here toward the entrance of this creek and see what's going on out there. I mean, we're seeing a few more fish on the, on the live scope, but I'm not confident they're cats. I just don't, I just feel, I feel better about it going, because I'm just, I thought by now, get back here to this part of the creek, I mean, yeah, we're only, we're still at 34 feet deep, I thought we would have found more bait by now, I thought we would have saw more bait. We know there was some fish out there toward that point on the end of this thing, and, you know, the last... I think it was two or three videos ago that I was out here and I fished that point for an afternoon I caught fish you know so we gotta we gotta put our little buddy here he's he's hanging in there with us I'm gonna put him right here in my pedal drive spot while we move you sit right there good buddy let's get our old part of the problem too maybe our bait now, if we were on some small fish, I think they would be all over the chicken. But this skipjack head, I mean, it's it's been out here all afternoon. <laughs> it's just, it's the only one I got, y'all. Skipjack, hard to catch on that bait run. All right. Here we go. Let's go back out here. I want to get back out here on some We'll, uh, I feel like our chances of catching fish are better out here and, and this too, getting later in the afternoon, if somebody was to get off work early and they wanted to come out here and fish this creek for catfish, that's probably where they're going to set up. And if somebody gets to it and we really decided that's what we want to do, we wouldn't be able to. So we're gonna make a run up here. Y'all come with me. Fortunately, it ain't very far as the crow flies. We didn't really cover a lot of water in this creek today, honestly. For as long as we've been out here, just when we were up here, every time I'd get bit, I'd hit spot lock and we'd sit there until I got everything situated and it slowed down our progress. But it was a good slowdown because we were getting bit. I may. I may, there's another loon up here. I may work my way. Well, what I'll probably do is go out here to the point where kind of around this, this bend where I was having trouble figuring out where the heck I was as far as the contours go. We'll start there. We'll make our way back out toward the, toward the entrance of this creek on the, on the tip of that point and probably just spot lock out there and just sit there for the remainder of the trip once we get out there because by the time we do that, that sun's gonna be starting to get low enough that I'm gonna be, <laughs> I'll be wrapping it up when that happens. So that'd be a good time if we do get out there and there's some fish working in as during that low light period, we may be able to hook a big one maybe. That's my hope anyway. Talking out loud here. Gotta talk to somebody, y'all don't talk back. Nice day though, cold, nice day, nice sunny day. You can see that sun up in the sky. I think, I don't know what time it is now. I'll put the camera back, I wanna see what time it is. 3.41. So we've definitely, we got less than two hours of daylight left. I guess it would help if I raise my live scope transducer out of the water. That'd help us get some more speed. 
Look at that, we got a half a mile an hour more since I pulled that thing up. That'd help our cause. This kayak gets about, about four and a half, 4.7 in perfect conditions. I've been thinking about, I mean, I know I just got the other little 10 and a half foot kayak for the, for the live scope experiment, but I've been thinking about switching kayaks again for a little while. I've been, I've been in this setup for a while and I like it for the most part, but it's not without its issues. For instance, the motor on the front obviously adds a lot of weight and I got my batteries in that front hatch because having your weight forward gets you more speed. If I got the batteries behind me, I'm at like 4.2, 4.3 miles an hour. And I know 0 0.2, 0 0.3 miles an hour difference, it don't seem like much, but it adds up over the course of a trip, over the course of a season. And so I want the most speed I can get. But having all that weight up there, when the water's choppy or the wind is up, you start taking water over the bow a little bit. And when you do, it ends up inside the hull. And most days when the weather's rough, I just don't fish or I hide from the wind. But there are times when you just can't. Maybe a storm blows up on you. Maybe you're in a tournament and you just got to fish the conditions as they are. When you get a bunch of water in the hull, man, it sucks. It starts sloshing around a little bit, makes the kayak unstable. And so that's one of the reasons that I've been considering getting a different kayak. The other consideration, especially this time of year, is I would like to be able to have a 360 degree seat where I could spin around and face the back of the kayak. Now this, this seat here, you can't do that. It's locked in place. When you're fishing on a cold day in the winter, and you spot lock, well, the motor's gonna turn into the wind to keep you positioned. And when you're sitting out there in the cold, it sucks, obviously, but it's way worse when the wind is blowing in your face versus blowing in your back. So with this kayak, when I spot lock into the wind, the wind's blowing this way right in my face. But if I could spin the seat around, I could have it blow in my back. But again, I can't rig up a seat like that on this kayak. So that's another reason for considering getting a different one. But it's just, I hate rigging kayaks. I honestly do. And so it's just so much easier to stick with what you got. It's the devil, you know. This kayak has some problems, but I'm familiar with the problems. I pretty much work around them. But this thing, this is a, let's get our baits back down here. This thing is a 2017 model. I bought it used in 2019. And I used it, I think, about a year or so. And then I got that Old Town Autopilot kayak. <clears throat> and so this kayak kind of got put on the back burner for a little while. And I had some motor problems with that Old Town Autopilot, so I ended up selling it and got a motor to put on this one to try out and liked it. I was getting more speed compared to the Autopilot. This motor was quieter. And so I decided to stick with this. And so this has been my primary kayak since I sold the Old Town, which I think was 2021, I think. And so I fished out of this and then my, I have my pedal kayak, of course, that I, that I use sometimes too, which that's my favorite kayak to catch fish out of. But having the extra space and the motor and the gadgets and stuff, I mean, it, this helps me get more content. So this kayak is getting a little older. The point I was getting at when I started on that spill was this kayak's getting a little older being that it's. 2017 and then we're coming up well we're 2024 now so this is seven years old i've had to 
I've had to reinforce the bow on the bottom where I've hit so many concrete boat ramps. You know, I've just, I've added plastic to it. I've broke my skeg line. My skeg is permanently down. I can't fix it. I've watched videos. I've, I've looked the diagram on Hobie's website. I can't figure out how to fix the damn thing. So I'm gonna have to have a new kayak at some point in the next year or two, regardless. So when I do get one, probably going to go away from the Hobie, unless they come out with something new that I just can't live without. But Hobie has had a lot of issues, it seems like. Um, this one, obviously 2017 model, I've not had any, other than my skeglon break, I've not had any quality issues. No hull cracks, no, nothing like that. The newer Hobies that are coming out, I mean, you get on the the fishing, the Facebook fishing groups there for Hobie, man, everybody's having holes cracking. Um, that Hobie 360 drive, man, everybody's, they've lost bearings out of there. The whole thing just falls apart on them at some point. And, and Hobie's just really the quality. I mean, Hobie used to be, uh, you know, they were a reputable brand. Like they were the kayak brand. You knew you were getting a premium product, premium quality, but they sold to a different, like a, I think it's like a private equity group or something like that. They, they, they changed ownership a couple of years ago. And the new owners have moved the operation, the production down to Mexico. And when they did that, the that's when all the quality problems, you started seeing all these people with cracked holes and all that going on. So I think the, at this point, you buy a new Hobie, you're basically buying the name. You're not really getting, especially for what they cost. I mean, they're, they're one of the most expensive kayaks on the market. You're just not getting the value that you used to, I don't feel like. So I'm probably not gonna buy a Hobie when I switch kayaks again. Now, what do I go with? I don't know. You know, a lot of the guys in the catfish world have new canoes. I don't like new canoes. Uh, I had one there a few years back, had an awful experience with it, had an awful experience with uh, their customer service, and I said never again. Now, they since then, they've come out with that uh, new canoe Unlimited, which a lot of the guys in our tournament club, a lot of those guys like that kayak a lot. But, you know, I've just still got that bad taste in my mouth from that bad experience, so I probably won't go with that. Here we got one. We, we just got back up here and got set up, and we already got one after that front rod. I think he's got it, by gosh. If he ain't got it, he wanted it. Let's pick up on him. Quarter. I think we got a yellow bass or something, maybe. Maybe something on that crappie jig. Yeah. It is. Actually, that may be, that may be a white bass, actually. I got my sunglasses on and there's a glare on you, fish. I can't, I think you're a white bass. Either way, you know what you are? Let go of that. You know what you are, fish? You're about to be a live bait. I'm gonna set him there. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna reel up our yellow bass. We'll throw him in our cooler. And then we'll switch the the white bass on the hook and he'll be a little bit more lively than this yellow bass is you did us proud today yellow bass i'm proud of you i'm gonna be more proud of this white bass right here if he will catch us something a little bit bigger boy that thing's Goodness gracious, run that hook through. All right. Well, folks, what do you say? What do you say we drop that fella right there down? Let's see what he'll do for us. Yeah, I saw that rod tip. I'm like, it don't feel like a, it's got any weight to it, but there was definitely something there.
I thought I thought adding those crappie jigs on to the to my chicken rigs might get us a few baits potentially. Let's drop this back down. We'll throw our yellow bass in the cooler. Might use him for bait tomorrow. I got some of his friends already in the cooler. I'm going to leave that skipjack head on the other rod. I know it's been on there all daggone day. But I've just got, I've got confidence in that dang skipjack head, y'all. Versus putting a, a piece of yellow bass or a chunk of that skipjack. What I'd kind of like to do is keep the other half of that skipjack and use it tomorrow along with my yellow bass. That way I don't have to go out and make a bait run tomorrow. That's kind of what I'm thinking on that. But if we end up losing that head, I will, I will switch it out for a, a piece of skipjack. Anyway, I'll see if we can get start working our way back out here toward the end of this point but um, yeah as far as kayaks go I don't really know I mean the the other option for mounting a 360 seat well native native come out with their I think it's Titan X this year and oh finally look right here before this fish is done interrupting we finally found us some bait right here y'all that's a bigger school of shad right there that's what I've been hoping to see all afternoon out here. We just couldn't find them as they as we've been working back in the creek. Yeah, that's a big school right there. They might be something around that. But yeah, that Titan X by Native that just came out last year. It has the 360 seat, but it's more for bass fishermen and that 360 c yeah it can spin around but you're not going to fish off the back of that kayak you're just basically spinning around to get stuff from behind you i want something that i can active actively fish off the back of and so another option that that some of the guys in the in the tournament group are using is a jackson take two it's a tandem kayak and what they're doing is they're taking one of the seats out and they are modifying a seat base some of them are using the new canoe seat base and putting in there so that they can have a 360 option because the seats that come with it standard they're basically locked in place you can't spin them around but that kayak is big enough and stable enough that you can do a 360 seat and it's it's an open floor plan so you don't have like a tank well that you're stepping on something like that so that's an option. What I don't like about that Jackson Take 2 is there's not really a good way to hook up a, a rudder. And I've gotten so used to having like my rudder handles on the Hobies right here. So for instance, if I'm trolling for bait, I'll face that motor forward, set my speed, and then I just sit here and I steer with my rudder handle. I don't, I'm not constantly working that remote button to, to steer myself. And that's nice. It's, a, that's, it's so much easier than constantly pushing a button to, especially not so much in open water, but like if you're working back through a, a creek trolling where it's twisting and turning, it's real nice having a rudder. And it's one of them things like, do I want to give up a rudder? <laughs> yeah, and, I, and you could probably DIY something together on that Jackson Take 2 but then you're going to have lines going everywhere and and you got to do a diy job which i really don't want to do so i don't know there, there's pros and cons to everything so i don't know well, who knows what i'll end up with but probably at some point either this year or definitely next year i'm going to be moving on from this kayak it's been good to me we've had a good run together but we're we're coming to an end i'm 
Well, I'm gonna keep making our way out. I don't want to. I don't want to move too fast. I want to really slow down through here. This is where it kind of loops around to the right here, around this point. When we get out that point, I think I'm just gonna spot lock. Let's see if we get some fish that work through here at at sunset or. Truth be, I'm gonna be out of here by sunset. <laughs> it's getting colder as the sun keeps going down, so I probably ain't gonna be out here until sunset. But just as the as the light begins to fade, I'm hoping more fish kind of work up. We know there's at least that big school of shad somewhere over through here, so they've got some bait to to work in here to eat. And them loons, they've been out here all afternoon. They're eating something. Been seeing them dive down. So, but there comes a couple. Actually, is that transducer going? They're going to be under me before I can, before I can get to them. Let's put our full screen back up. Help our, help our calls to be able to see a little better. Yeah, I tell you folks, man, when it gets cold, I just lose motivation to fish. I brought my coat with me. That's behind me here, but I'm kind of at a point in my life where I feel like if it's so cold that I need a coat, I just don't even want to fish at all. Because I know even if I got that coat on, I'm still going to be cold once I'm on the water. My hands are going to be cold. My feet are going to be cold. And I'm just, even if I'm catching fish, I'm not going to be fully enjoying it. So if it's not like, if the temperature ain't at least 40 degrees, I'm just at a point in life where I just really don't want to, I just don't want to go out when it's, when it's under 40 anymore. I know I'm a pansy for sounding like that, but I just don't, Fishing's just more enjoyable when it's warm. I think I can finally get rid of my shades here. Y'all take your sunglasses off now. The sun's reached a point it ain't gonna blind us. I need to pull my toboggan down some more though. I'd like to have a toboggan with my kayak catfish logo on it. Some of y'all out there, y'all have got toboggans with my logo. Catfishsumo.com, they're available right now. Still waiting on mine to show up. I got one of the prototypes at the house. We had to make some corrections to. But old Daniel, he's been busy. He's been vacationing and stuff. And of course the holidays, he ain't got around to, to sending me the new toboggan with the catfish logo. And I need me one. My head would be so much warmer out here if I had that. I'd probably caught at least five more fish too. Because them, them toboggans with the, with the logos guaranteed catching more fish. That statement's not FDA approved, but I believe it. I believe it to be true, folks. There's a little something. Let's see if I can get my cast lined up. Okay, I see my jig. I'm, I'm off. I'm off course, but he's coming this way. I hope y'all can see that. I've landed that jig right in front of him. Will he take a bite? Will we finally get, oh, he nailed it. He nailed it. We finally got one on the jig. Oh, we finally nailed it. I felt him thump it, man. We finally, it's taken a while. We finally got us one on the dang jig, man. I put it right in his face and he snatched it. <laughs> That's how it's supposed to work, folks. You make a cast, you get it. You get it in their face there and they eat it. That's how it's supposed to go down there. That's fun, man. That's a rush right there. That ain't a bad cat either, man. That's a blue. I mean, he's, don't get me wrong, he's not a monster, but that's a, that's one of the, that's a small fun size, larger dink, whatever you want to call him there. I'll call him a small fun size since he ate that jig. Man, that was awesome, y'all. 
I'm gonna give this fish some front camera time. That's how much, that's how excited I am about catching him on this jig. Come here, fish. Come here now. Let me have it. Open up. You old fish. There we go. Come on in here. That was fun, y'all. That was exciting. That's what he ate, just a little. I think that's a half ounce. Half ounce, I think, jig. I'm not entirely sure on that. Don't quote me on it. It really don't matter. As long as you get it in their face. Last year, I was using a, a, a variety of baits last year. Swim baits, bucktail jigs, some spoons. I was catching them on all of them. Fish, the sun's behind us. You ain't going to get a good picture. But uh, Oh, oh got to let you go, fish. Got to let you go. We got to let him go. We got this rod going down. Let me just, let me spot lock a second. Let's spot lock here. We got this one going down. We're back on some fish out here on this point. We're on the back side of this point here. And we got on some fish. That one there we hit with the jig, he was up. He was up higher in the water column. That's what I wanted to see. That's what I was seeing there last year around all them shad. Oh, here's us a drum on the crappie jig. Yes, sir. We just got us some more bait for tomorrow. You're coming with me, Mr. Drum. That's a nice surprise catch. Yes, sir. Oh, oh. All right. Nice. Drum makes some good bait. I typically like them a little smaller than this. Easier to cut when they're smaller, but you know what? Beggars can't be choosers. Folks, I'm going to take him with us. Let me put you in here, Drum. There we go. Thank you, sir. Oh, that makes me happy, y'all. Hey, we got one finally. How many casts I make today? A bunch. We finally got one on a jig. That's fist pump worthy, even though he ain't fist pump worthy size. And then we got us a drum, which I will gladly, gladly use for bait. Yes, sir. Let's send this back down. Yeah, folks, I should have come back up here sooner. Once we got away from the fish and wasn't getting bit, I should have just turned around then and not wasted any more time making our way back. We, we left fish to go find fish. Common mistake that I often make. I'll have to let y'all tell me about it in the comments. Again, y'all should have spoke up. Y'all out here fishing with me. Should have said something. Should have talked me out of it. Can't count onions for nothing. All right. Business picked up, y'all. Man, I can't believe, finally, after all this time, finally got one. I hope it showed up there on the, the screen, too. I know I'm, I'm focusing on casting that jig, not necessarily where the camera's pointing. But I got it close enough to him as that jig was going down and he was kind of coming the direction. And I guess I got close enough, he saw it, and he come up there, man, you just feel, bam. That's fun. <laughs> I mean, that's fun. See, that, that, that kind of feeling, that, that's what makes me want to continue on with live scope, even though I hate it most of the time. Most of the time, it don't do me a bit of good. If I'm just sitting, you know, normal fishing day where I'm anchored down or spot locked, like on the end of a point, and I just got it on. Well, it's just a novelty thing, right? It's not really doing anything. I'm not targeting fish with it per se. And the days where I troll around trying to find fish with it, and I'm just not seeing fish up in the water column, those days are frustrating. But when it all comes together, like it just did, man, that's fun. Love it. We got some bait. Some of shad right there. I'm on. Let's expand our depth there a little bit. It's right there on us. I'm on. I'm spot locked right now. I'm gonna shine this transducer around a little bit. I think we're gonna. 
I'll probably get back on the move here and just keep making our way on out and around toward the tip of this point. I think that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, I'm not really seeing nothing right now other than that school of bait that's right there by our baits. <laughs> so let's get back on it. I hope I find something else to cast at. I know that fish wasn't the biggest one of the day, but I'll tell you what, it was the most fun. <laughs> I mean, it, it was the most fun and it ain't even close. I do feel good too about the, the chicken rigs here. Having that crappie jig under the piece of chicken. I mean, that's caught us. You know, I was talking about fishing Key Largo, taking a day off from counting fish, but hell, I've been lost track of how many we've caught. But I know we got to yellow bass, a white bass, and now that drum on the crappie jig under our raw chicken nugget. So it's, it's paid dividends for us. I'm still feeling it, man. Over <laughs> that fish, that was awesome. You know, that, and that's one of the fun things about that. You know, last year I never caught, I never caught a huge fish doing that technique. I, I just, it's mostly that size right there and smaller. I had one fish that I caught on my ultralight. Uh, and I, I thought it was a damn crappie on the screen and I, I fought it for, I don't remember how long it was. I got the video there on my channel. I think it was 10, 15 minutes I fought it on two pound line and finally got the dang thing up the side of the kayak before he broke me off. That was the biggest one I caught on artificial, at least actively targeting. I've caught some bigger than that on the flies under the baits. But as far as actively casting the fish, that was the biggest one. But most of them were really small. But it's one of those things that you don't need a big fish necessarily to have a good time with. It's kind of like when, I'm, when I go out ultralight fishing with my ultralight rod and the gulp minnows. You know, I can go out and catch me five, six inch bluegill and have a dang good time just because you're, you're matching your tackle to the size of the fish. And then bluegill and white bass, yellow bass, and you're fishing ultralight. I mean, they fight hard on that tackle. But it's kind of the same way when you're using a... And this, I, you know, this is a this is an old rod right here. This is a Bass Pro Shop Bionic Blade. It's a heavy action bass rod. Rated 3 8 ounce to 1 ounce. So, you know, for bass purposes, this is a heavy action rod for what we're using it for here with these catfish it's a lighter tackle type setup right but when you hook a, a fish like we just got there a few pounds you know and they just slam that bait man it, i mean it's it's a good time so you don't need big fish necessarily to enjoy yourself with this setup what you really need and this is what i've struggled with what you need to have a good time live scoping and and jigging them with the live scope is you need those fish like that one was that was kind of just up in the water column and he was relatively still he was just moving really slow that allows you to get a get the time to see him line everything up make your cast and boom it all works together that's what i struggled with from from when it started to get warm last spring and the big schools of shad when they dispersed that's what i couldn't find anymore i couldn't find those cats like that that were up higher in the water column that i could target with the artificial so i, I don't know i don't know how to fix that problem <laughs> you know i don't know how to go out and find fish that just maybe just aren't there you know in the warmer months maybe they're just spending more time along the bottom they might be shallower but they're still near the bottom when they're shallower i need them fish to be up so anyway 
that's a long spill about that. We got some more shad there working through. We finally found us some bait. I guess what I would assume is that those, those colder nights that we've had has maybe pulled the shad out to the main channel and they're hanging out around here at this point. You know, when I fished out here uh, before, uh, two or three videos ago, I was in my other kayak that didn't have the graph. I just used the Navionics app and anchored down where the end of this point is out here. So I didn't have a graph to be able to see if there was bait there or not. But, you know, time the, the weather has changed since then anyway. Not like it would have mattered. What was going on then may not have been uh, indicative of what was going to happen today but still at least now we know we know where some bait is at and we know we're getting more action out here at this part than farther on back in the creek i'm just barely moving y'all i'm just i'm just barely working up through here it ain't the speed ain't even registering there on the on the thing it's 0, 0.0 even though i am just barely moving i think it's got to hit like 0. 0.3 to, to show up so we're we're under that but i just kind of want to just go through here real slow if we see something else that's up we'll throw at it if not we got our white bass that's live down there we got our chicken down there we got our we got our skipjack head that's been on since the start about three hours now <laughs> If I had another one, we'd switch it out. But we're rolling with what we got, folks. There comes the fish up. He's moving though. I'll never, I'll never get a bait in front of him. That old loon right there. May have been him we saw on there for all I know. We're at 45 feet. I'm gonna lower some stuff down here. Same thing I mentioned before, when you starting deeper and you're working your way shallower, you gotta adjust your bait, you gotta raise them up so you don't get snagged. Well, when you're shallower and you're working deeper, you gotta adjust your baits down. So you don't want them. You don't want them real high up off the water column unless you're seeing fish that are up. Now there was a tournament I fished last year at Hoover Reservoir in Ohio. It's up there, Columbus, Ohio. And it was, I'm trying to think when that tournament was. I think it was in May, possibly. We're gonna throw at this fish right here. Pause that story right, right there for a minute, y'all. We're gonna throw at the fish. I got two of them. Right there, I've missed them. I've missed them. I can't, I can't show you these fish because I got to turn this way to make a cast. Oh, they're swimming off. I've missed them again anyway. Got it. Missed them. These look like bigger marks too. Need them to turn back. They're 40 feet out. Can I? Ah, I've missed them. No, no, I hit about 50 something feet out. Can I get their attention? I've, oh, it's went behind them. They're continuing to move on. Dang. Yeah, we gave it to college try. Well, anyway, um, I was saying there about Hoover Reservoir in Ohio. That tournament I fished, and I think it was in May. I'm pretty sure it was in May. But I saw some fish my first day up there. I saw some fish that were high up in the water column. They were big marks, and they were chasing shad. And I ended up putting 
a bait under a balloon, even though I was fishing in significantly deeper water, I was running a bait three, four foot down. I ended up catching a fish and I went out there on our tournament day. And I think every single fish I caught was under a balloon, three, four foot, six foot down at the most in water that was 20 foot deep or deeper. But those fish, for whatever reason, they were up and I had saw them on the electronics. I had saw them on my practice days up chasing bait. And so that prompted me to, to try those baits just suspended under a balloon higher up in the water column. But that's one of them things that you just, I just don't see that very often, especially out here where I normally fish on Tennessee River. I just don't see that very often. Maybe in other places, maybe maybe bodies of water that have a thermocline in the summer. I think it's a possibility that you see fish suspended more, maybe above that thermocline. But it's not something that usually out here, even in the hot summer months, we usually have enough current flow that we don't have a thermocline. So this is not something that I'm that I'm experienced with. You know, honestly, I, I just don't have experience fishing the thermocline. But I'm inclined to believe you might find some fish that could be live scoped in the summer months if you had a thermocline lake or reservoir. Need to blow my nose again, y'all, but I ain't gonna do it. I'm gonna try to ride it out here. I done, I done pulled out my snot rag once. I ain't gonna try to do it again. I am gonna get me another swig of water though. It's been a while, I'm parched been talking up a storm I've had a lot of people on my ultralight videos tell me that they kind of oftentimes will listen to those videos like a podcast type thing while they're working or driving a truck or road trip or whatever and so gonna have a podcast type scenario you got to be talking right you can't be sitting there in silence nobody wants to hear that i'm curious to see i'm real curious to see if y'all are interested in this type of video okay i feel like we've had a pretty good day today as far as getting enough action to keep to keep things interesting i i worry about going after uh you know like like a normal trip from there's one sitting there boy he is right under me almost let's see if we can we about to put this i'm gonna try to turn the camera here see that mark right there i'm about to put this jig right on his head i've lost sight of him i was in the right okay there he is there he is he's coming up to it Oh, he got it too, by gosh. He got it. I hope y'all can see that on the screen. <laughs> this one ain't going to be as big as the other one. But he nailed it. I think he was about 20 feet deep. Just sitting there. There's a little blue. Nice, man. That's so much fun. That is so much fun. Come up here, fish. Pop that jig out your mouth there. Nice. And you know, folks, this jig here, I mean, it's plain. I ain't got no scent on it. I don't have any, you know, there's nothing added. There's no trailer. There's no cut bait. I mean, we're just throwing a plain jig and the two fish that, oh, we got, we got this rod going down. Hold on, hold on. I was trying to save the two fish that we have managed to put the bait right in its face, like hit it on the nose, we've managed to catch. And that was the case last year, too. I wasn't using scents. Spot lock here while we get this. One. I wasn't using scents. I wasn't using additives of any kind. No cut bait on there. Just plain jigs, plain swim baits, plain spoons. And I was catching fish, and we're doing it again. This one here ate the chicken. Come here, fish. 
You done, you done got your chicken nugget, didn't you? No chicken bait. I don't like using chicken for big fish. But fish like this, this is the type of size of fish that can't eat a skipjack head or a big chunk, but they'll sit down there and just chew on it. So you'll see your rod get hit. You'll be getting bites, nothing soaking up. But I thought today, with us doing a little raw and uncut video here, unedited, we need some action, right? And a good way to get action from those fish, allow them to hook up, is to downsize. Downsize your baits and hooks. It's paid off with some extra bites and extra fish caught that we wouldn't have got. Now, if I'd had four rods out with bigger baits and I'd been sitting on the end of this point like I would have done, would we have, I don't, we, we wouldn't have got as many fish probably. We might have got some better quality, possibly, not guaranteed, but possibly. But my guess is we would have had a, we would have had some downtime and I don't know how that would have went with this style of video. We'll see what the numbers say, you know, we'll see. If nobody watches, then we'll know this thing, this concept went over like a fart in church. If some people watch and it gets some views, but it ain't getting watched very long, if the average view duration ain't any good, that will, then we'll know again it went over very poorly. But if the average view duration is long and we get some views, then we'll know it's kind of, resonating with people along with the comment box you know the the ultralight videos i've done the unedited ones have gotten way more comments and engagement than my normal videos i mean it's not even close i mean there are like a lot more comments on those videos so those are the kind of things i'll look at but time of year that's the big thing right now january february these are my lowest viewed months every year like it, it typically, my channel specifically, but oftentimes just the, the kayak fishing genre period on YouTube, after about Labor Day, September, you start to get a dip and you decline all the way down through January, February, and you bottom out this time of year. And then about March, you start getting an uptick in views. And then May, June, July, August, that's your peak. That's when you're really, that's when you're really getting a lot of views for kayak fishing and catfishing content so it's going to be tough to judge even if this video does poorly just because of the time of year it's going to be hard to judge whether it was just the video ain't no good or if it's just you know it's not getting pushed out as much by youtube so regardless of how this turns out today i will do another video like this once we get on into the warmer months for sure but i've said before on the ultralights man it's, it's nice for me from the standpoint that when i get home today i'm gonna move the footage over from the camera onto my computer i'll trim off the the beginning of the video there from the time i started i hit the start button from when i started talking there's a little you know, two or three second gap there. I'll trim that off. And then same thing at the end of the video, whenever I tell you it's by, from the time I tell you it's by till I hit the button to turn the camera off, I'll trim that part off. But that's it for editing. Everything else, y'all have seen everything today. And save that file, hit the upload on YouTube, and I'm done, man. Now it'll take, oh, here's another fish right there. Let's swim into our oh we got that rod going down too and we got this fish let me just let me just try to hit this fish he is right there stay where you're at fish stay where you're at i've lost sight of him my jig is where he was but i can't see him anymore and i think that fish over there is gone oh man that fish come out of nowhere Dang. He 
gone now, though. Let's check our other bait over here. Probably need to get back on the move, keep making our way over here toward the end of this point. But yeah, I mean, this style of video for me, it's easy to do. No editing. The only thing really about it, the only drawback, if you will, is that the file sizes are so big for a video that's going to end up, I don't know where we're at here. This, this thing's going to end up being close to four hours long, probably, maybe a little over. A, a video that long is a huge file. And so it takes forever to upload that to YouTube. So if the power flickers at my house or internet goes out, because for some reason it often does just randomly, then you got to start that upload process all over again. And, you know, I have to do these videos in 1080 versus 4K that my edited videos are in. So the video quality is not as good. If you do a video like this in 4K, my gosh, the file size, it would take, it'd take a month to get that thing uploaded to YouTube. At least with my internet speed, anyway. Now, these people over there in India and Pakistan that's stealing that's stealing my content they seem to be able to upload like 10 videos a night <laughs> on their facebook pages I'm like how the hell is it that we're here in america and it takes me it'll take me six hours to get this video uploaded today but somebody in pakistan can steal 30 of my videos and have them uploaded in a single night <laughs> i mean it's like what's what's going on here what what's what's causing this chaos in the world but that's how it goes and it ain't just it ain't like they're just stealing my shorter length videos i mean these pages that are on facebook currently there's four pages on there that's not me imposter pages three of them actively posting videos and they're posting the three and four hour long videos like i mean they've i mean they it has to take them a ton of time you would think unless their upload speeds are just super fast which they i guess they have to be but i don't know i sure as hell can't upload a video that fast a four hour video filmed in 1080 is going to take six to eight hours on my internet but you know i got cable internet it ain't like i got dial up i'm not using america online you got mail I mean, i've got cable internet but it just takes a while on them on the larger file sizes another thing i want to try and I'm, I had every intention in the world to do it today and forgot, forgot to bring it, was I had, back in the fall, one of the things I was trying out this year was that DJI camera. I got that Action 4 and the microphone that goes with it. And I tried the camera out for a few videos there, but just, you know, it just it's an okay camera. But the video quality just don't compare to GoPro. The DJI is better at every single thing than gopro except for two things number one it's better at picture quality gopro is better at picture quality and two the gopro app is better and that's where i get my thumbnails i'll get like a screenshot of the video footage off the app dgi's app you can't even you can't even do that it, it like it don't you can't take pictures from the footage it makes no damn sense and gopros when you take a picture from footage on gopro like it's really good quality like it's a a really good quality picture so um there comes the fish on the screen right there at the bottom um so basically the two of the most important things for me gopro's better at and so i ultimately decided to stick with my gopro versus the dji but one of the things i want to do is use the microphone so the dji microphone it plugs in 
to the camera. And you can plug it into a GoPro. You just have to have an adapter. And what I found with the using the adapters on GoPro, you have you start having problems. If you use if you got anything plugged into the GoPro, you start having glitches. Sometimes the screen will freeze up and it'll stop recording. It's more prone to overheating. When I stopped using that media mod to plug in the microphone and, and stuff, this the camera works flawlessly, other than it overheats if you're filming in hot weather or direct sun. But I don't have those glitches where it just the screen freezes and it stops recording. You have to take the battery out, put it back in to reset. I don't have that problem anymore. So what I want to do is I want to try that DJI microphone. It will record on the microphone itself. Now, it won't be on the camera footage unless you have that transmitter plugged into it. But you can record on the microphone, and then once I get the video on the computer at the house there, I can then hopefully overlay that the, the microphone, the, the audio footage, onto the video and have better quality audio with the GoPro without actually having to plug in something to the GoPro, which will we'll be filming for four hours and the camera will have quit an hour ago. That's how it'll go down. I can see, I can envision that happening. Don't tell, don't ask me how I know, because I know it's happened before. <laughs> That's how. When I was running that microphone, that external mic, I had it in, um, I got rid of it, it was 2022. I was using the Rode mic with the GoPro and I can't tell you how many times I'd get home and I guess maybe I had bumped it or something where it plugs in and it just, I didn't have any audio or, or the camera, I'd have a glitch and, and it would just, the screen would be froze and I, I wouldn't, I'd, I would have caught a fish and there would be nothing there. It just stopped recording and I didn't know about it. So it was so frustrating. I said, you know, I don't need good audio that bad, but I'm going to try, I want to try this dji microphone by itself see if i can overlay the audio onto the video and yeah, this is one of the things try it's a good I, I mentioned before there when i got that dji camera back in the fall like this time of year when my views drop just seasonally you know it happens every year it's you know i mean obviously it sucks i'd like to get a, a high number of views year round but having a off season if you will for youtube views it does allow me to try things that you know new stuff that if it don't work out it's not a big deal if it causes me to miss out on getting content or mess up a video or something it's not as big a deal as it is when you're in a one of the peak months you know where you're getting more views i hate to lose content during those months but this time of year you know, like today, for instance, if I got home today and something was wrong with this footage, it's not the end of the world, you know. If you're seeing this, though, I guess things worked out for this video. <laughs> I guess think we, we've probably got a big glob of... No, we're good. I thought we might have... I say that, I jinxed it. We've got a big glob of catfish slime on the lens there or something, but we're good. At least from that standpoint, we're good. It's always something when you film it. I, I, I said before, I wish there was just a a combining of technology. I wish either GoPro would buy DJI or DJI buy GoPro. That way you could take the best features of both cameras and have it on one model. Take the fact that DJI works, doesn't overheat, it doesn't freeze up, battery life's better. The mounting system's better. Take all of that and combine it with the quality of the GoPro footage along with the app of GoPro. Man, you got the total package if you get that. But for some reason, after all these years, GoPro just can't make a camera that don't overheat and have glitches. And for some reason, after all these years, DJI just can't get their video quality to be as good as GoPro. I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. There must only be two or three engineers in the world that are just good enough to do those particular fields, and each company has one or two of them and not the full set that they need. 
that's the only thing I can figure. But I do still have that DJI camera, so so the two the two situations where I plan on using that DJI camera is if we get on a good live scope bite. I'll obviously bring out that camera and set it up in front of the screen. That way you see everything as I'm casting throughout the day on there. Uh, so that's one scenario I'm going to use it. The other scenario where I'm going to use it is if I've got somebody fishing with me. One of the things I'm wanting to try on these unedited videos is if I'm out uh, with someone. I want to be able to use two microphones and so I'll need that camera for that because I can, I can plug in that transmitter of that camera and pick up both microphones on the camera footage itself. Because if I got somebody fishing with me, you know, in a kayak and they're 15, 20 feet beside of me, you're not going to hear them on a stock mic. You know, you need a little, you need them to be wearing a microphone. So that's where I'm going to use that DJI mic or camera in the, in the coming year. But I'm going to stick with the GoPro for my main fist, I'm still using the GoPro 10. I haven't seen anything with the 11 or 12 that impresses me that I need to go out and buy it. All I really need is to be able to film in 4K at high quality and to be able to get my thumbnails and my pictures off that app. That's all I need. So I don't see a need to upgrade. We're just still slowly making our way out. That, that point is over there behind me, and we're just kind of coming out. And well, I'm going to turn on the map here, see where we're at. Yeah, we're here. We need to be, we'll round on out about here. But uh, just slowly making our way along here. Making our way in the world today takes everything you got y'all can go ahead and finish singing the cheer song i probably i probably just got it stuck in your head you'll be singing that all night i know i'll be singing it the whole way home i'll have it stuck in my own head serves me right for doing that to you yeah it's funny i i don't i don't know that i have watched an episode of cheers in Gosh, I, I mean, I can't, I can't even remember the last time. It, it's probably when I was a kid and somebody, I, oh, here we go, fish. Oh, he dropped it. He dropped it. But I mean, I ain't seen an episode of Cheers in forever, but I can still sing most of the words. I probably can't get them all right, but I can sing most of the words that are to their song, their intro song. Oh, cheers. I wonder what took that rod down that didn't hook up. Yeah, when that happens on your bigger baits, it's understandable because the fish got part of the bait but didn't get the whole thing or didn't get the hook. But them small baits, like how small a fish you gotta be to, you can't get that piece of chicken or get that crappie jig. I wish I had another skipjack head. That's, that one's been on there over three hours now. We've had, we got that one fish on it. We had that other one that got foul hooked with it. But, you know, it's kind of a, one of them things you can't get bait you can't get bait and i've been struggling i was wanting to fish today obviously and tomorrow is going to be another day kind of like today but the wind is supposed to be less tomorrow so i wonder i don't want to have to go out tomorrow and try to find bait before i go catfishing because you know these these days right now in those winter months again i hate the cold so I'm pretty much, I, I'd wait till about noon before I leave the house just to try to let it warm up as much as it can. 
And then, you know, time you get on the water at 12, 30, 1 o'clock, hell, you ain't got much time before it's getting dark. So I don't want to spend any of that time catching bait tomorrow. So I'd like to have the rest, the other half of the skipjack. And I got them yellow bass left over and that yellow bass that we threw in there from early and that drum too. We got him, so. So I'm good on bait for tomorrow, but I'd like to have another skipjack head for right now. That you can want in one hand and poop in the other and see which one fills up first, as the old saying goes. I ain't seeing much out through here now. We kind of keep making our way on out, but most of these fish, it seems like, have been out here near this part. The only big schools of shad we've seen today have been out here on the back of this point. So I think this was the right move. I mean, we may have run into some more if we kept making our way back, but I feel better about coming back out here. And we've hit those two fish with the jigs, which is awesome. Can't tell you how much fun that is. Yeah, it's something you, I mean, I'd like for you all to experience it, but buying a live scope setup, I mean, it just, here in a few years, these setups will be cheap. They'll, they'll be like a normal 2D sonar graph. Right now, they're still overpriced. I'd got that one on Black Friday, I think 2021, I think. Maybe 2022. I can't remember exactly when I got it. Time runs together, you know. But I got it on sale, and it was still outrageously priced. And like I said there earlier, I'm all the time thinking about getting rid of it because it takes up so much space. You gotta have this transducer over here on the side of the kayak and I don't ever do any good with it. But then when you come out like today and I catch them, even though they were small, two small cats with it's like, man, that's so much fun. I hope when I get home today, I hope them washer clamp things are in the, in the mailbox. I hope. get the other kayak at least try it out even, even if it even if it don't work out i'd like to just get it on the water and try it i think the live scope on the motor and steering I, I i'm fairly confident with it my concern with the size of the kayak being 10 and a half foot i think my I, i'm sure it's going to be stable enough just because of the width of it but i think maybe the the front to back weight distribution could possibly be a problem. So one of the things is, you know, you ain't gonna know until you get in it and find out. So I just gotta get it finished up. I, I my channel members, they've seen this on the video, but I've DIY rigged a mount to clamp that trolling motor to the front of the kayak on. Cause I didn't wanna if it works out like I hope, and I decide to obviously keep the kayak and, and use it for that purpose, well, then I'm going to drill into the kayak and make that mount more secure. But I didn't want to drill a bunch of holes in this kayak just to try something out and then it not work out like I hope and then turn around and sell it because you know how it is. You try to sell something you use, people going to use any anything they can to try to knock you down on price so having a kayak with a bunch of holes drilled into it, that's an easy way for people to try to try to knock you down a little bit so i'd like to keep this thing in good a condition as possible until i know for sure that i'm gonna be able to do what i want to do with it but if it does work out i'll i'll melt that thing a lot better we're coming up on another fish right there, about 40 feet away from us. Let's see where that transducer's point is. Kind of right in front of the dang motor, but I think we got a chance at that one. Oh, I've 
We missed him by a mile. Let's try that again. He's still there. Hell, I didn't do any better with that cast. That gimmick. Get him, get him back on. Okay. Kayak's moving toward the right. We can get a better cast, maybe. Right. I don't see my jig. Okay, there it is. There it is. We got a chance at this one. I still can't see my jig, though. It come in the screen briefly. I think that's it right there, I think. Oh, man. I think if that's my jig, I hit close to him. It would have fallen back to me by now. He's still there, though. Let's, let's try it again. He's just sitting there. If that's a cat, that's perfect. That's exactly what we need. That went too far to the right, I think. I see my jig on the screen, though. He's there. The jig's kind of in and out. It's going to land right there near him. Oh, I can't see him now. I need to spin that dang transducer. He's got to be close. I see my jig. Take him. Man. I mean, he's just sitting there waiting there. He's still there. He's still there. Let me turn this way so I can get another cast off the left of the kayak. We got a real chance. That if I can just get this jig near him, I mean, he's just sitting there begging for it, man. I'm going to try to stop the kayak here. About 20 feet in front of us. This one, I think, is going to be too short. It's falling toward him, maybe. Oh, come on. Does he see it? I've got it right there a few feet. I didn't get close enough. Got to get it closer, Justin. Come on now. We got to do better than that. He is just sitting there waiting on this thing. This has got a chance right here, folks. Here goes my jig down. This one's got a chance. I'm coming down almost on top of him. I'm going to stop that thing and try to swing it toward him. Ah, come on. Come on, fish. I barely see a glimmer of him there. He's swimming toward me. He's right here. There's my jig. I gotta. Let me just let me just drop it back down. Let's see if I can hopefully land it in front of him. I've lost the jig on the screen. I've lost the fish on the screen. I'm close to him. Oh my gosh. I had 87 chances on that fish. I couldn't get him to do it. 87 chances, folks. He's still right there, but he's to the right of me. Yeah, he's sunk down there a little bit farther toward the bottom now. Need one over here. Oh, oh, right there. Boy, this one's only about 10 feet out. Oh, I lost sight of him. Where'd he go? He's actively swimming. That's where it gets tough is when they're actively. That one sat there and waited on us. I had I had unlimited chances at that other fish. 
and couldn't get him couldn't get a cast close enough to him amateur hour out here folks amateur hour let's see where we're at on the map how close are we to the end of this point yeah okay we're good oh Still need to go a little bit to the left here. Keep working our way on out. I can't believe that. Though. I had so many chances that he was just sitting there. I don't know if it was a cat or not. Who knows? He was catchable, though. I know that. Just from how he was sitting. There's that one there. He's close to the bottom, but... 20, 15 feet out, 20 feet out right there. Let's just try for him. Let's give it to old college tries. Uh, he's swimming off now. He's going the other way. Damn it. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a cast. I was hoping to maybe cut him off out there. But he's still, my jig ain't gonna get there. I still see him right there on the bottom swimming off. I ain't gonna get there in time. Well, if at first you don't succeed. That's a lot of what it is, though, folks. It's a lot of casting and a lot of missing. And by the end of last winter, I was getting significantly better. But it's it's definitely a... Now, I hear them people, sometimes you see these anti-live scopers, you know, they're, they talk about how easy it is to go out and catch fish with live scope and stuff. I'm like, you know, it's... It certainly helps to be able to see fish on a screen and put a bait in front of them, but there is a there is a skill to landing your cast a few inches from a fish's face when he's 30 feet out from you and 20 feet down in the water. You got to do some geometry with this crap, you know. <laughs> there's a there's a, a skill to it. I didn't just pop out of the womb and be born into a point where I could operate this thing and have success with it. So it ain't quite as easy as what people make it out to be. That's my point in all that. But it does make me a significantly better crappie fisherman for sure. Because I'm a terrible crappie fisherman. But if I go out and obviously move faster than I'm moving now while we're fishing, but if I just move a little quicker and scan it around and find some brush piles in these creeks and stuff and you, and you find a bunch of crappie on them, usually I can find a way to get some crappie to eat on them brush piles. And those are fish that I wouldn't, wouldn't otherwise find without the live scope. So from that aspect, that's the one that's the one fish species where a live scope has benefited me greatly is crappie. But with that said, when I go ultralight fishing, most of the time I don't go in this kayak. I like my other kayak. I like to even though it's super fun today watching that catfish come up, eat the jig and stuff and feeling that thump. When I go ultralight fishing with the gulp, man, I really like not knowing that the bite's coming. I like to just kind of beat the banks and just throw and, and not be able to see what's there. There's, I could make an argument for it both ways. So, basically, I like both. That's the thing. I like both. It's like choosing between a blonde and a redhead. How can you choose just one? <laughs> Brunettes are pretty good, too. You know what I mean? It's like, how can you choose your favorite? It depends on the day. There's another fish right yonder. 
Let's see, where am I? Oh, I think that might actually be two fish, two small ones right there versus one. Oh, 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 doggone it. We had that rod going down. I'm going to drop this thing on him. I think that's two small fish. I don't think he stayed hooked up anyway. Yeah, I think that's small fish. I've got the attention of him though. Look, he's coming. He's coming. He's chasing my jig back as it pendulums back. He ain't very big. He ain't much bigger than my jig on the screen, but he come back for it. Yeah. I assume that right there is what took our rod down on that left one. He didn't hook up. Bad timing for that fish to hit anyway. I was right in the middle of a cast. These fish got no respect. They just they just hit that bait whenever. I really thought we got out here we'd be getting a few more than we have though. Just kind of a you know, one, one of them days as far as qual numbers of quality fish anyway. Obviously, there's been some small fish that we've caught today. A uh, pretty decent amount of those, but the bigger fish today, and it may just be a timing thing. It could be the fact that we've been rocking the same skipjack head for almost four hours, and, uh, and that live bait ain't conjured us up nothing. We had, I mean, it's, you know, we had that dang live bait. Why not throw it on there? Kind of my, my feeling on it. You don't get any fresher and livelier than catching a daggone thing and dropping it right back down. So it's worth a shot. But we've at least got some numbers of fish. Multi-species. Oh, we get blues, yellow bass, white bass, and drum four different species. That's me helping fish in Key Largo. Well, I did lose track of how many total fish we caught, though. Once we went above five, it was over for me keeping, keeping track. I'm going to drop down, straight down. This is got potential depending on which way that fish is facing we got one on this rod and i got i'm right on this other fish that one's on i'm i'm right on this top of this fish right here i just dropped down on though he's not very big he's i'm bringing my jig up he come up with it but he ain't very big he may not be able to eat that jig my jig may be about as big as him Let's reel up and see if this one's still on over here before he eats that whole circle hook. There we go. Let's reel in another one, folks. These smaller cats on these bass rods, my, my skipjack rigs here, they had a good time. Lighter tackle will make the smaller fish fun every time. Yeah, he's, well, he's all, he's all up in that thing. Yeah, there you go, fish. Show out there a little bit. I feel like I pulled you the whole way up that you even swim. He got that crappie jig. He's got the hook in the mouth. And the leader from the crappie jig around his dorsal fin. Now he got that in the jaw too. You've had a bad day fishing. You get getting one hook in your mouth bad enough, you got two. There we go. Say something for yourself. Have you made your family proud today, fish, or are they embarrassed the fact that you got caught? He ain't gonna tell them about it. He ain't gonna tell them he was up here. He wasn't supposed to be up here today. 
that fish wasn't supposed to be at the, out of the house. He was grounded. Let me dry my hands off. We'll put a piece of chicken on here. Let's see if we can't get another one right quick. Well, he went through much chicken, huh? I tell you, I wish, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people are big believers in using chicken, especially over there in the Carolinas. It, it seems to be a more popular bait, uh, especially like around Santee Cooper and stuff. But around here, I just don't, I mean, you catch fish on it, don't get me wrong. You get numbers of fish. You just don't catch a lot of big fish on it. I just don't have a great deal of confidence. And everybody, you know, they'll hit me up in the comments and say, well, you got to put Kool-Aid on it or garlic on it or yada, yada, yada. You know, their grandpa's secret recipe. I'm like, yeah, you know, you know, if you got confidence in it, you catching fish on whatever, use it. But if I'm after big fish, I want a... I want another fish. I want something that they are eating, you know, something that's in the body of water, preferably at the head bait of whatever that particular fish is. That's what I want. Most of my big, we got one right there. Let me get this and lower back down. We'll reel it in. You know, most of my big fish though, throughout my life have, have come on head baits. I just have so much confidence in head baits. It's hard to, I've caught so many big fish on head baits, it's gonna be hard to ever break me of using them. I'm not sure this is a cat. This may be another one on the crappie jig. It is. Got another yellow bass. Guess what, yellow bass? You're coming with me. There we go. Got us another bait for tomorrow. We left our chicken on there. Nice of him. Let's fix our, our crappie magnet plastic back here. Crappie magnet's got them split tails there that's white and chartreuse that's what i that's what i throw for skipjack probably at least 75 80 percent of the time maybe more than that white and chartreuse there's a few times a year i will throw a spoon and they is a few times when when the shad spawns you get a bunch of shad fry all over the lake them skipjack are feeding on them fry and they'll be eating them little tiny tiny baits and they won't hardly eat a spoon they won't hardly eat a crappie magnet you got a fish with something real small so then i'll throw i'll switch over to a trout magnet which is a the smaller size of that plastic basically and I'll catch them on that. But otherwise, I typically, I'm throwing them crappie magnets, white and chartreuse. You can use white, you can use uh, solid chartreuse, you can use a, a pink. But for me, that white and chartreuse, that's my, that's my confidence color. And it don't matter about the type of, I mean, you could use whatever type of plastic you want. It just needs to be a small, about the size of a thread fin shad is what you want your jigs to be for skipjack. Because that's the bulk of their diet is thread fin shad. I'll tell you what, y'all, I'm getting cold. That sun is dropping back there and I'm cold. We're gonna give a few more minutes here, maybe see if we can get another one. Get back on the move a little bit. I can tell you that sun, you can see back here. 
it's just about to the top of the tree line and once it goes behind the tree line i can already feel it getting colder it's gonna get cold quick my hind end is gonna be headed toward the car or else y'all gonna be hearing me blow my nose again i can feel the snot right now it's like up in the nostril like in the in the curve of the nostril there because i got some big nares But I'm going to hold off on getting that out of there until we're done filming because I don't want to subject you to it. <laughs> let's, let's drop on this one right here. He's, he's almost right under the kayak here. Depending on the direction he's facing, this has got potential. I think my jig's close. I've lost sight of my jig. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I've lost sight of him. Dang. Well, I just thought we was going to drop it right on him. get one more here folks you think it's gonna happen i don't know if it happened i'd like to get one more with that that jig and the live scopes what i like to but i don't know i don't know if we're gonna see enough fish to even get the chances at it or not i almost feel lucky to get the ones that i got as as badly as i have missed some fish today i feel lucky to get the ones i had it's the old blind squirrel finding a nut, you know, you just, you make enough cast, you're bound to hit something. Yeah, a couple, I can't tell if that's one fish out there about 40 feet out or if that's two smaller fish together. I can't tell. might be just one fish man it's it's on that left side right there too i mean it's perfect perfect place for me to cast but it's a long ways out oh that was two fish did you see i don't know if you saw them split there or not they something spooked them it was two of them though i saw them when they when they spooked i saw them go their separate ways There's, that may be the same two fish, but they're back over there. Now they're over here. Let's see if I can. Ah, they're swimming away. Oh, I'd like to get one more, y'all. My hands <laughs> getting cold. It's amazing when that sun gets to the angle that it is now, it's like you can just feel, you can feel it getting colder, like you can actually feel the temperature dropping. Told y'all I'm a pansy and it's cold, man. It ain't, cold weather ain't for me. I ain't built for it. Yeah, I watch that um, Luke there. He used to have Catfish and Carp YouTube channel. Now he's got the Outdoor Boys. He's over there in Alaska. He's going out there filming these videos of him building forts and and the and the Alaskan snow and cutting wood and stuff. And I thought, man, person, Alaska, I'm sure it's beautiful. All the videos and pictures and stuff I've seen, it looks like a beautiful state. And I'd love to visit it sometime in the summer. But I sure wouldn't want to be out there in the dang snow. <laughs> I mean, you just, well, I wouldn't want to do it. Make a cast. I don't think I'm gonna get that. In. I ain't even gonna see my jig. I've, I've cast the wrong way. It's in the wrong line. He's gone now anyway. I 
How far are we on the time on this? How long is this video? Lord Almighty, are we really over four hours? I swear, I mean, it, I, it don't feel like it's been that long to me. This is one of them videos, even though I've talked the whole damn time. Sometimes when I get done with the ultralight videos, I'm like, I'm almost kind of, my mouth is kind of tired from talking so much. But today, maybe it's just because I haven't filmed much lately. But like today, I, I feel like this has flown. We'll slow down here. Let's see if we can. I need a, you're fishing. When you're trying to hit these fish that are, I've been lost sight of the fish and the jig. When you're going after them fish that are deep though, I need a heavier jig tied on. That'd help it get down there a little quicker before either the fish moves or before you move in the kayak. Yeah, it don't feel like it's, it don't feel like it's been four hours to me. Like today's been a, today's been a good day. I think that one there is too small. I've missed him anyway. Right out there is one about 30 feet in front of us. About 35 feet down. He's moving toward me. Okay, there comes my jig. I'm going to be behind him. Oh, that may be another. I've lost sight of my jig. It was going in and out. I think that was it. I think that may have been two fish swimming closely together because now I don't look like it's as big. I have no idea where my jig's at either. <laughs> That gummit. Well, I never said I was good at this crap, y'all. I can find us a point or a creek mouth or a hump and I can anchor us down and we can catch some big catfish. But as far as going out and hitting a three pound catfish in the face with a jig from 30 feet away and 20 feet down, I ain't very good at that. <laughs> Seeing some more fish to throw at, though, at least, as we've gotten out here. Of course, we're going to see them now that it's about time to go, because I don't care what we're seeing out here. I'm about to skedaddle here in a few minutes. Oh, I'm going to bring it up to this one. This has got a chance. He's not very big. He's, he's sitting there with it. He's just looking at it. I'm turning, I don't know if you can see it or not. He's kind of. Ah, dang gummit. That one wasn't very big. He wasn't much bigger than the jig. He probably just, he's probably just being a bully and following it. <laughs> yeah, it's a. It's a work in progress, folks. By the end of winter, I'll have my casting down a little better. I'll be hitting fish with a little bit more frequency than what I've hit them out here today. But just not at that point yet. And not seeing as many fish today either. I thought, I mean, especially you would think with our water temps, dipping into the 40s that the shad would really be schooling up thick and they may be in some of these other creeks but they didn't appear to be if they were in this one today they wasn't in the part that we were at the couple schools we saw there when we got back out um, toward the end of this creek here they, they i mean they were big enough to be noticeable on the screen but they weren't those huge massive schools like i was seeing last year Man, I want to get one. I wanted to get one more so dang bad. I just don't think it's gonna happen, y'all. Oh hell, I'm 
missed that one by a mile too. <laughs> Hands are cold, y'all. That sun, I tell you what, we're already, we're over four hours on this crap. I doubt any of you still watching, but that sun is behind the clouds. It's about to drop over them trees. And my hopes and dreams are going down with that sun because I'm cold. I'm about to wuss out on you here. So, uh, man, it's been, I've had a good time. I don't know if y'all have or not. Again, y'all let me know this concept the raw and uncut it's been a big hit with my ultralight fishing i mean most viewed videos on my channel this past year but to catfishing you know i don't know if it's going to go over or not but that's for y'all to decide i've said before y'all drive the bus on here you like something and i'm having fun doing it we keep doing it if i'm having fun and you don't like it well i'll do it but just not on camera and if i'm not having fun and you ain't liking it well there ain't no reason in doing anything right so anyway y'all like it we keep doing it but uh we'll see we'll see how the views are we'll see what your all's reactions is but for those of you who have watched especially if you've watched all four hours of this mess thank you so much i appreciate you making me part of your day your evening your night whatever it is you're doing while this video is playing appreciate you making me part of it but i'm gonna reel these lines up i'm gonna take it to the car and i'm gonna crank that heater on blast y'all i'll see you next time thanks for watching